the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Lift your hands and let's cry for a visitation tonight. Let's ask the Lord for a mighty visitation of His Spirit. Give us a visitation, O God. Emmanuel, 
the living God, we ask you to do something remarkable in our lives. Lord, we bless you. Help our hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to cry and say, Lord, do something remarkable in my life tonight. Do something remarkable. See about that. I'd like us to lift our voices in one minute and thank God for his faithfulness upon this ministry. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. We thank you because you are here. Jesus, we thank you. No man can do these things except God. Can you thank him in one minute for the miracle? For the testimony, the transformation. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. That's our testimony. That he is good and his mercies are forever. Voices. Sing it from your heart. You are good and your mercy is forever. we are grateful we come with hearts full of gratitude for the mighty things that you do in our midst we extol you and we worship you we are not ashamed to declare that without you we can do nothing we remember where you brought us from and we thank you for your faithfulness. Who is there like you? There's no one beside you. And I lead the earth to worship you. Who is there like you? There's no God beside you. I lead you there to worship me. Who is there like you? There's no God beside you. Jesus, we bless you. Let the name of the Lord be exalted in the name of Jesus. Please walk to three people, give them a big hug, and you'll be back to your seat. Hallelujah. Make sure you celebrate someone. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Thank you. I want us to celebrate.
a good old friend of mine and the ministry, Pastor Femi John. It's been a long time. Good to see you, sir. Bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming, sir. Let's get to the word. Lord, we give you praise. And we also want to celebrate as many people who have come to write for you and me. I think we should celebrate them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3. Blessed be the name of the Lord. On my way back home, I was just thinking all through the journey. Um, I was recounting on God's faithfulness. Please pay attention inside and outside. And um, I was just thinking through what the Lord had put in my heart to share with us tonight. Your dominion in life is a summation of your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom i've said this again and again and i want us to please pay attention every gate can be opened if you have the key not if you want it opened gates only open when you have the keys desire is not enough to bring you to the place of destiny and breakthrough and so as we keep coming week after week I want you to realize that there is a transformation that is happening and that transformation is happening by the power of the Word of God the Word of God not only gives you knowledge it translates you to become what is saying and it empowers you to demonstrate the reality of what you claim to know any truth that you have and you know that cannot be demonstrated is not yet a revelation in your life hallelujah and so i want to challenge us that our passion in this place we must keep our passions high even as we seek to press to know him and to understand his ways i give you a guarantee the bible says they are life to them those who find them not everybody will find them they are not life to christians to those who find them and health to their flesh ah kenny it's good to see you hallelujah and so i want to share with us a few things that will challenge us because it's my desire that the list of us will be as great as david in the name of the lord jesus christ knowledge is like an atmosphere it commands possibilities in your life it's not about trying it's either it is there or it is not hallelujah are you blessed already so make sure that you are learning constructively the goal is not just to carry out a service. You know that we have no business with religion here. The goal is to empower you. Praise the Lord. Come, promise. Look at this. Please bring your what you are holding. Come. Watch this, everyone. What is he holding? What is he holding? You are holding a book. You are aware you are holding a book. If I try to convince you that you are not holding anything, will you agree? Is it an issue of prayer? You are, this is called reality. You are holding on to something that has become a conviction. Please listen to me. This is not something you are trying to believe. This is not something that is subject to debate or the opinions of men. See, the degree to which your you become stable in the kingdom. Um, your stability is proportionate to the depth of your conviction. Whenever you are not convinced about a reality, it's easy for you to drift. 
either when it does not yet produce result or when there seem to be conflicting opinions the apostle said but i know whom i have believed i wasn't just told about him i know he says and i am persuaded unshakable immovable that revelation has become a conviction for me and i stand upon it this is what god is doing with us bringing us to a point where we are convicted that you know that you are holding something you are holding something that you can take to the world and no devil no culture no system no limitation no gate can stop you it's not just a prophecy it's a resultant effect of paying attention there are some things when you hold on to you have entered your sabbath it's not if it is when it will come is god speaking to us now thank you acts chapter 3 the bible talks to us about the activities of the early church please pay attention jesus had resurrected the bible tells us in acts chapter 1 how that he was with them for a period of 40 days teaching them on the matters of the kingdom he was helping them to be grounded in truth are we together and after the holy ghost had come in acts chapter 3 the bible says in the hour of prayer they were going to pray and then they saw a man he was begging for arms he had been there at gate beautiful and the bible says this time around when peter and john came peter looked at him and he made a very interesting statement in verse 6 chapter 3 of acts verse 6 and peter said silver and gold have i none he says but what such as i have the question is at what point did he know he had it because there was a time he did not have it is that true at what point what was the evidence that what happens to a man to know you've had something are you getting what i'm saying now he said such as i have i give i have something and i'm not only it's not just i am aware of it and it can be dispensed i have it i know that i have it I understand the dynamics of his operation and I can release it to you. He said, such as I have, I give. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Let's see what happened the next verse, please. Watch what happened. He says, when he said that the man was still sitting, he didn't stand up. He was still sitting. And the Bible says, his sitting was not going to sway Peter. For Peter to say, I'm not sure again. Peter said, I know I have it. Whether you don't respond, it doesn't change my persuasion. Such as I have. You don't know the activities that sponsor my conviction. Your refusing to act is too small to shake me. And he held his hands. Because he knew he had something. And he was insisting, I have something. And when I speak to you, there should be an effect. And if there is no effect, I insist. He says, such as I have, many of us see that man seated would have quietly moved away for the shame. That is lack of conviction. You, you think you have something. Now a man stands before you and challenges your conviction. And at once you chicken out. But Peter said, no way. I know I have it. You are just meeting me. You don't know who else I have met. You don't know the 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 revelations that support my audacity i know i have something and the man was just looking many people have told me to try standing up and peter said you don't know me and the bible says he held his hands he knew he had something that revelation persuaded him enough he stood before that challenge and would not be embarrassed because he knew it must work hmm. is god speaking to us he says and he took him by the hand and what and lifted him and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength to validate that he had something to give listen peter would have looked at him and said well john you too you saw 
I tried. We did exactly what Jesus said. Oh God, please don't be embarrassed. After all, we didn't collect money. And he would have gone back. That would not change the fact that he had something. But it was not released. Peter said, such as I have. I'm not only aware, I understand that it is supposed to be dispensed. And I refuse to allow what I am seeing to influence my convictions. He says, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Not confused. Persuaded. The problem with the church is lack of persuasion. The grounds upon which our audacity is standing upon is fragile. We don't take time to establish conviction upon kingdom realities. We're in a hurry to get Rema. We're in a hurry to get revelation. We're in a hurry to get knowledge. Let me tell you something. The world is ruled by men of conviction, dead or alive. You don't respect a man because you believe in him. You respect a man because of consistency of conviction. When a man becomes unbending, he commands your respect at once. That's why we cannot pretend that Boko Haram is a force to reckon with. They will be defeated, but their convictions are strong. Strong unto death. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The only reason, the only reason why faith is an issue in the church is because our convictions are small. Hallelujah. And so when we sit down like this, as the word of God comes, it gives us understanding. It not only tells you what you have, it explains to you the dynamics of it. So that you get to a realm of persuasion where nothing can shake you say amen. amen listen pay attention to what i'm saying because life will challenge it at any level ask any leader life will challenge your convictions from head to toe and the gates will only open when you prove that you merit it opening not everything in the kingdom is a gift there are things that are rewards rewards for consistency rewards for persuasion hallelujah are we together when the holy spirit comes please listen when the holy spirit comes upon a believer at new birth i want you to know that the coming of the holy spirit in every one believer that gives his life to christ introduces the presence of god to that man's life a presentation of the presence of the father the bible tells us again and again is that true so when the holy spirit comes listen comes to live in you he represents the presence of god and with him is a measure of god's ability at work in you everybody say god's ability say it one more time god's ability say god's energy say god's capacity when the holy spirit dwells in a man his presence comes with a measure of god's ability at work in that man now whether or not you know it whether or not you use it is a different thing but that is the truth because scripture cannot be broken are we together now so when the holy spirit comes he comes with a measure of god's ability this is very interesting because the kingdom was designed never to function absolutely by the strength of man. Listen, the changes that humanity requires cannot be affected just by the, the strength of man. It cannot just be affected by intellect. It cannot just be affected by kindness and charity. It takes more than that. It takes an ability that is supernatural. It takes the ability of God to bring transformation, not just preaching. Do you know what it means to speak to a man and just by speaking, make that man change his ideologies? An ideology that he has hold or he's held through for decades and then in one meeting you speak and he's persuaded enough. It's called utterance, not oratory. 
oratory is the ability to speak well you learn that in school utterance is the capacity to communicate spiritual realities on the strength of god's ability such that the listener is able to enter into your experience that is utterance it's not oratory what we have in church is oratory but we need utterance it's a gate that gives you access to the ability of the spirit to persuade men such that they subscribe to the value system of the kingdom are we together so the ability of the holy spirit that brings it down divine life many christians jump and about having the divine life but we do not see the evidence of that divine life that divine life that dwells within you and it comes with a measure of the ability of the spirit if you do not recognize that there is an ability of the spirit that is at work in you you will rob yourself of the capacity to function like god god gave us his ability so that we can produce his result listen listen only god's kind of result can bring change and impact in our world only god's kind of result can bring blessings only god's kind of result can bring lifting only god's kind of result can bring transformation if you're with me say amen god's ability that's what we call power that's what we call the anointing the anointing is not oil the anointing is god's energy his very ability we define power in physics as what work done per unit time energy expanded that's exactly the definition of the ability of god his capacity when god wants to do anything he depends on his ability and so when he sends you as his ambassador he gives you his ability god's ability say it again god's ability one definition of frustration is to try to achieve god's kind of result with your ability you will see how crippled you look in life say after me i have the ability of god how many people have gone to seek people out of zeal and kindness you are sick sam in the name of jesus be healed by their ability they want to seek god's result but they are conscious of their ability no it is not given to man please hear me it is not given to man to produce God's result with his ability how many pastors and churches are frustrated because they are trying to get growth they are trying to get this and, and all kinds of teachings it takes the ability of God shout it God's ability listen listen I'm telling you this don't just allow the scientific world fool you the realm of the spirit controls the physical realm it was james the apostle that told us for as the body without the spirit there must be a spirit component to everything for it to work i don't care what it is if there is no spirit component it is there there must be a spirit component to business there must be a spirit component to your academics there must be a spirit component to marriage i love you i love you is not enough there must be a spirit component there must be a spirit component to anything that we do the problem is many times we ignore the spiritual side because we think it is not necessary oh my goodness goodness how helpless a man is brothers and sisters how helpless in the face of this cruel life there are gates on every mountain there are giants on every mountain it doesn't take stories to move them it takes the ability there are devils standing on the gates of your finances it takes the ability of God why do we need the ability of God is his power to effect changes listen change can never occur until the power of god is present in a place any kind of change the ability to effect change from healings to miracles 
to soul winning to transformation it is entirely dependent on the ability of God there are so many people who try to do evangelism sincerely from their heart but there is no ability how many times have we stood in the face of situations that honestly demand the touch of God but we know that we are short of God's ability God gave you his ability so that you can truly produce change the Bible says in John chapter 15 it says herein is my father glorified when you bear much fruit so then shall ye be my disciples God wants us to bear fruit but it takes an ability an ability higher and greater than yourself are you getting what I'm saying now? the second reason why we need the ability of God is to be able to produce supernatural results please write it down supernatural results if your results are natural the world does not have space for you the 21st century does not have space for natural results the minimum standard in our world today is a supernatural it takes an ability of God for a mortal man to produce results out of proportion hmm. the Bible says they were astonished when they saw Jesus Christ and they saw the kinds of results that he was producing let me tell you something don't ever allow anybody preach you into thinking results do not matter in the school of greatness only God sees the heart men can only see the outward appearance please are you hearing what I'm saying don't ever let anyone fool you it's God that can see the heart you can die with your good intentions if you want to influence men you must let your light shine not let your light glow it must shine for men to see not angels God wants them to see it it is in the seeing that they become persuaded therefore permit your light to so shine before men that they may see your good works and as a result glorify your father john 17 verse 1 jesus was speaking he said now the hour has come he was speaking to the lord he said glorify now thy son to the end that thy son will bring you glory so the only way god is glorified is when we are glorified our glorification is a means to an end not an end in itself it gives God the opportunity because no man can praise himself you need another to praise you it's against the law of greatness for you to praise yourself when you praise yourself it's called arrogance when another man praises you it's called honor hallelujah so we need the ability of God to produce changes there are people here who are sick it doesn't take stories we can shout and jump around and just make a lot of noise when they tell your dad in the office or your mom we are going to fire you brothers and sisters it takes the ability of the spirit to change it when the landlord tells you tomorrow if you cannot bring your money you are out it takes what the ability of God the problem is this we have ignored the ability of God in the church we believe in God but we have ignored his ability that anointing that agency of the spirit that empowers men to produce change and to produce result this ministry by the grace of God is a testimony of God's ability the ability of God walking through men and I want that to become your testimony from tonight that tonight you will give up on just trying to get things happen by your strength when you depend on God's ability you will see results that are out of proportion praise the Lord tonight is a very simple teaching until the ability that is within a believer is released he can never be a blessing to his generation I want you to know this until the ability that is resident within a believer is released not acquired not gotten your being anointed
does not make any meaning to your generation until that anointing is released the release of that ability is what brings about blessings the bible says no man lights a lamp and puts it under a bush no man does that but you the purpose of lighting it is so that it can give illumination and direction so until the ability or the anointing is released the believer can never be a blessing you only become a blessing when you allow the measure of god's ability in you to find expression in your physical world the bible says and the word became flesh and did what it now dwelt among men and they beheld the glory they could never behold the glory for as long as it was in the realm of the spirit but when it became flesh Shadrach, it's good to see you. I'm happy seeing my people. Praise the Lord. The word became flesh. The anointing that God has given you, when it translates into wisdom that men can relate with, when it translates into creativity that men can relate with, when it translates into dunamis, power, the capacity to produce change here and now, then Christ is glorified. Otherwise, we'll keep talking a lot of stories. That which is resident within you must find expression for Christ to be glorified. Are we together now? Now, the problem with many of us seated here is not that we are not anointed. It's not that the hand of God is not upon our lives. But that inability to understand the dynamics of expressing the ability of God is what has crippled us. And so we stand before mountains we can walk over and yet we cry before them. The reason is because we have not come to a point where we realize that the ability of God is at work in us. Moses, listen, Moses stood before the Red Sea. God did not add anything to him. Right there, there was the ability to cross over. But he was afraid. When he went back, God just said, why are you coming to me? I gave you a rod. The word is in your mouth. Tell the people to move forward. He went back and did what he would have done in the first place. Do you know that many times when you go to God, most of the things you get from Him is comfort because actually you have the ability to do what you do. But just because our psychology is built around just hearing something from God and so God said it is well, now go. And then you get up and go. You would have done that right away. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Your going and that reception of comfort was just to encourage you. But all the while the ability was within you when he appeared to gideon in the book of judges chapter 6 when he looked at him what did he call him oh thou mighty man of failure but gideon was hiding there was no special impartation service he just said gideon what is going on ah, gideon said god you too you know what is going is happening and he began to tell him how that he was going to go and defeat the midianites there is an ability within you I'll never forget the first time God told me this thing. Listen, it's not enough to know God is mighty. This was a song that gave me that revelation. You know this song, Lord, you reign forever. Lord, you reign forever. I worship you. Years ago, I was singing this song. I worship you. This was the part that changed me. You reign, you reign. You reign, you reign. That's you talking to the Lord. And I heard it very clearly, like a man singing back to me. This was what I heard. You reign, cause I reign. You reign, cause I reign. You reign. This is what God is telling me back. He's responding to my worship and saying, Son, it's not enough to know I reign. There's no confusion about that. The trouble is here on earth so reign because i reign now that you are aware i've told you you are like me i expect a legislation that is consistent with what is happening in heaven that way the kingdom comes it's not enough to say lord i know you are reigning what is happening to us here we are dying keep reigning let's keep dying no no it says thy kingdom come thy will be done where in the earth not in heaven there is no confusion about order in heaven the confusion is here so he says rain and it gave me an understanding not just this thing people jump around i'm a king i'm a king and go and die like a fool 
you jump based on knowledge and revelation see you can have something and you can take it anywhere believe me i know what i'm saying a man can have something and you can hold on to it and run with it that's what god is speaking to us he reigns so you reign he reigns so you reign so he expects you to legislate ah. listen listen a man called saint patrick have you heard about saint patrick a man called saint patrick the son of the king had died for six months how many months six months they had buried him and it was it was bringing a lot of catastrophe and that man called saint patrick walked straight to the grave and signed his name on it saint patrick and they opened it and dug out a human being alive it's in history men who knew they had something not independent of god listen with god all things are possible i've demonstrated it for you here come promise can i use you again with promise all things are possible without him some things are no longer possible but with him the word with god here means in partnership in partnership that's why we call it koinonia in partnership there is an ability you and god constitute an unbeatable team have you watched wrestling how they can beat somebody as if they are passing him through a meat machine and then on the other side his colleague is there bouncing and saying touch me show that you 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 are weak but we are a tag team is that true if you win we share the money together if you lose we lose together it's a partnership and so the holy ghost is standing and telling you look look you have been going around this mountain why don't you come into partnership with me there is an ability within you listen listen there is an ability it's called energies the greek word is energies it says now unto him philippians 3 uh, uh, 20 unto him who is able he has an ability to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or think not according to his might according to the power that works not in heaven in you in you the possibilities in your life are dependent on activating the anointing and the ability of the spirit within you and so like the wrestling someone lifts his hands and have you seen the way people touch the other i mean they almost have no strength and they touch somebody else and he jumps in and plays nonsense with the one who has been beating his colleague and wins and then he holds the guy who is a team together and they lift the belt together he doesn't leave the belt and say you when you are tired stand up and walk home he lifts him and says we won listen i'm bringing you into a revelation that your victory starts from the standpoint a consciousness that with you and the holy ghost never do anything outside of the holy ghost you will fail it's not a prophecy it was designed to happen that way master we have toiled all night but in partnership with your word let's go back and watch a miracle are you hearing what i'm saying now prophet elijah outside of the holy spirit he could not say anything he said look guys you want prophecy from me i can't move my human ability cannot do anything but play me a mistrial and the moment they began to play when the holy ghost came upon him he said now i have something to say fill these ditches with water you may not see wind you may not see rain yet the valley shall be filled with water listen that is not yet possible in your life does not mean it is not possible it's amazing how a challenge can be killing you and somebody will come and pass it as if it does not exist there is an ability that sponsors that audacity and i want you to know that if you are in christ that ability is within you there is an ability i walk conscious of this every time i go to minister i walk conscious of this and the lord walking with them 
and the Holy Spirit working, not just in Joshua Selman, but with Joshua Selman. There is a partnership, it's a koinonia. We are inseparable. It's like the, a salt covenant. Where I am foolish, I trust his wisdom. Where I am confused, there is strength. When I stand before a sick body, I know, I am very aware, I'm intelligent enough to know that you cannot squeeze out cancer from somebody and it disappears at once. I'm smart enough to know that that cancer is matter. It has weight. It can occupy space. But then when his ability comes, Shabala Katayaba, hmm. when his ability comes, that's when the difference. See, listen, don't trivialize what I'm sharing with you. This is your recipe. This is your key to unstoppable, unstoppable exploits in the kingdom. The ability of the spirit. Thank you. Let's take a few things. I want us to pray. Let's take down a few things. You must allow the measure of God's anointing within you to find expression and produce testimonies in the lives of people. Just two or three things I'll say again and then we'll pray. God's ability in a man can grow and it can increase. The ability of God that is resident within a man can grow. Every living thing grows. God's ability is alive and so it can grow. That you have received a measure of that ability. Listen, listen. The ability of the spirit in a man is like currency. Let me explain to you something. Please look up. Please look up. Who has money? Somebody give me money. 1,500. Thank you. Watch this. If this is 200 naira, how many things can 200 naira buy? 200 naira can buy a bottle of minerals. Is that true? Can it buy wine? But is it money? At least it can buy some things. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now let me explain to you something about God's ability. God's ability in you can only solve problems that are within the range of the dimension of that ability. Anything higher than that measure, watch this, that measure cannot be solved although you have the ability. Listen, listen, listen. I want you to get this. The ability of the spirit, the anointing of the spirit at work in people is in levels. And there are possibilities that are activated within that level and that measure. Are you getting what I'm saying? When the measure of God's ability is at work in you, every problem, every giant, every mountain that is within that range of power will be solved. But everything higher than it will remain an obstacle. Get this revelation and you will see the reason why although you are anointed, some things have not changed. Praise the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Thank you. Just like this currency, watch this. This is 200 naira. It can buy wine. Mama put, you can eat something with this now. Yam and, and akarankose. Watch this. I can eat akarankose at Mama put with this. Comfortably. With dignity. Can this take you to a five-star hotel, the restaurant? But is this money? So what do you need to do if you want to go to a five-star hotel? Increase the same thing. Not a different thing. Increase a measure of the very same thing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Listen. That you have a measure does not mean the challenges in life respond to measures of the anointing. Measures of graces. Don't let any man fool you that the moment you have an ability, it can solve every problem. It's not true. Those who talk those things have not worked in the anointing. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. This is what I work in every day. It's like a range. When you upgrade on the level of the anointing, that's why the Bible says he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my feet. But I got to a level where that would not be enough again. Then he had to measure a thousand cubits and the river increased and it was to my knees. Are we together now? And then he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my lungs. 
then he measured a thousand cubits and it was an overflowing river and he said everywhere that river went whatever was dead came alive there are different levels of the anointing the ability of the spirit so a mountain can jump and leave and you go to another mountain and you can be shouting everything you know and the mountain steers you there are sick bodies that we may struggle around with in many crusades in Nigeria and those sick bodies can be there let Benny Hinn step in just two songs of worship I guarantee you not he has not even if he's talking about relationship it doesn't matter he can even teach on how to be a nice housewife and while he is teaching see the anointing does not care what is happening it whenever he sees a need and a demand for it it flows there immediately are you getting what I'm saying now so God's ability in you responding to a situation you can have a challenging issue that looks like a mountain and someone comes with the ability of God and brings a dimension of wisdom you never thought of and dissolves that thing in one minute and it's over case closed the ability of the spirit that was what happened to Daniel they were about to slaughter them and kill them and he said ah, ah why is the king hasty in this all these people have tried their ability he said please just give us time and the Bible says in the night the secret was revealed to Daniel and he got up in the morning and answered the king same thing happened to Joseph see how men took their generations by the ability of the spirit Joseph did not become a prime minister because of interpretation of dreams Joseph became a prime minister because he offered a very serious supernatural solution to the problem. If he had interpreted dreams, he would have said, okay, we have had you, please, um, water, go and lock him up. And he would have just gone back. Highest, they would have given him a day off and he's back to the prison. But he was smart enough in addition to the dream. He said, I know this is the answer. This is what we should do. And when he said that, look at him. I love Joseph. He said, oh king, find a man. He knew there was no man. Find a man. Check around. Don't trivialize my grace. Find a man. If you can find another man with it, no problem. And the king said, is he not here? We kept quarreling, asking people to come and interpret the dreams. Where can we find such a man? That's why we worship the Lord. Truly because there is nobody like him. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's the reason why we worship Him. We love Him. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody prayed. Nobody prayed. No. Nobody prayed. There is something the Spirit of God will do to you that this song will become for you. No, not just for God. I want you to always be conscious of God can give you a territory. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to listen to me. God can put something upon your life that will make... Let me not go ahead of myself. Thank you, sir. That you come to a point where there is something in you without any show of pride you know it's not cheap and you know it's not what you find by the roadside listen when you explore the ability of God in you from border to border you will enter your Sabbath experientially I guarantee you the Bible says now there remaineth a rest for the people of God Hebrews chapter 4 right and it says let us therefore labor the word labor there is content even as unto death to enter that rest for he that has entered that rest has ceased from his works there are two ways the ability of God in you can grow number one is by revelation 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 Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge. Grace and peace be multiplied through knowledge. Through knowledge. 
the word knowledge there's the word translated epignosis a comprehension of truth that makes the person who is knowing it and what is known become one not just awareness is actually the word that is interpreted intercourse so grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge hallelujah hmm. revelation when light comes to you then you will arise the bible says they that sat in darkness they have seen a great light great light arise and shine isaiah 60 he says for your light is come not your light is around the light has come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you he says is one revelation god gave me watch this please if you are if you're a minister of the gospel here let me share with you a secret please look up money does not make a great ministry are you hearing what i'm saying you don't let any man fool you money does not make a great ministry it is impact that makes a great ministry and supplies finances financing ministry is a product of impact are you getting what i'm saying now impact and this is how it happens when your light starts shining gentiles will come unbelievers drug addicts all kinds of people will come kings will never come to your light when you become consistent and you keep growing it will start attracting brightness and excellence is a language there are those who know how to speak it the moment you start speaking their language they will come it says gentiles shall come to your light there is a level of ministry where all you see are gentiles people who are coming to be saved those coming to be sick somebody dragging his trolley of problems and coming to dump it and then you have to work on it but the time will come as your light begins to become bright like the day kings will start coming kings don't come to your light they come to the brightness the brightness of your rising and when they come like queen sheba they will not come empty-handed they will come with their bounties they will come with their blessings the wise men from the east when they saw jesus christ they came with gold they came with frankincense they came with man they came to honor him every time there is brightness it begins to draw certain kinds of people so there are many men of god who are trying to look for money they are trying to look for money because they think money makes an impactful ministry what an error it doesn't work that way money is only a reward money is a receipt for doing something right we've learned it here when you get money as a man of god it's a receipt just like you buy something the receipt means you have paid for it not you will pay for it the receipt is an evidence that something has been done not is being done not will be done but the problem is we trivialize the ability of the spirit in us how many of us have looked like gideon and felt that there is nothing within us oh there is that great man of god there there is that great woman of god there and we forget mary was there standing and an angel appears to her and says blessed are you women among this and that and that and then he told her that she was going to carry a child and she said how shall these things be in other words naturally this should not happen seeing that i know not a man and the angel said something which is key for us this night it says the power of the highest that's how it happens the power of the highest shall overshadow you how can i be the last born in my family and yet i'm the one god will use to wipe the tears of people he says the power of the highest there is an ability of the spirit that can come upon you the second key to growing in the anointing and in god's ability is impartation 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 is a transference of spiritual virtues transference of spirits transference of possibilities a man who is a possessor of a dimension of possibility can share it like you use a candle to light another it is a possibility in the spirit that's the character of the dimension of god's ability called dunamis 
is an ability that is capable of being reproduced listen I've said it again and again a true leader does not maintain followers a true leader reproduces himself and turns followers into leaders if Joshua Selman remains a superstar and an anointed man everybody keeps clapping I have failed from the world's perspective and from the perspective of mediocres we keep clapping but let me tell you something God's dimension of measure or his index of measuring success is not just by the crowd we have inside and outside. It is the individuals becoming a replica of his grace and anointing and his ability. God measures success one by one. He doesn't measure success by a crowd. Thank God for all of that. It's an evidence of the hand of God. But if we are to sample 10 people at random, and engage you with spiritual challenges and see how you are able to navigate through the dynamics of the operation of the spirit it is a true measure of the success of this ministry the ability to be empowered and carry that conviction and go and begin to produce results around your sphere of influence and i insist that it must happen to you in the name of jesus christ so impartation and revelation write this down very quickly the channels for releasing the ability of god the ability of god must be released please burn this into your mind i'm being very simple tonight because i want us to have this basic understanding before we pray the anointing the ability of the spirit must be released for people to be blessed by it it must be released it's not just the obtaining of the ability of God, but the dispensing, the release of it. That's what brings blessings to people. God's ability, God's ability is working in me, is working in me. God's ability, God's ability is working in me, it's working in me, it's God's ability, God's ability is working in me. Is working in me. Sing it with me. God's ability. God's ability. Is working in me. Is working in me. And so when a mountain stands before you and you carry this ability you will move with audacity humanly speaking you should chicken out come on but i love david david stands with a sling conscious of an ability that is bigger than him and goliath said am i a dog i know i will kill you but at least respect me come with knife as if you are fighting a man and David said, I will not, I will disgrace you. Let me even tell you how I will kill you. This is what will happen. This sling will hit you and I will remove your head. It's God's ability. When you see men do supernatural things, brothers and sisters, I want you to know it's God's ability. What you see happening tonight is God's ability. The energy, the very strength of God manifested as wisdom manifested as power manifested as faith manifested the, the ability of God is what we call grace whether grace to become or grace to do is all called grace and it's God's ability that's what makes men champions 
that's what makes men wonderful people is the ability of god the ability of god is like a programming it's like a software when it enters you you are infected there's nothing you can do about it the moment you carry it your environment begins to respond that's the treasure that we have in earthen vessels it's not about the vessel but the treasure and god designed it the only way you benefit from the treasure is to carry the vessel along that's the reason why when a man is anointed you don't bring out the anointing and keep him you carry the man too as you honor the anointing you honor him when you bless the anointing anointing cannot eat is the vessel that eats it as his benefit for paying attention it's working in me look at the bible full of people who took advantage of this divine ability If you get this one thing I'm teaching you, you will change your life in a remarkable way. Hallelujah. Play this mic. Aaron sent me a text before I came here, Pastor. And um, he sent me a text and said, Man of God, I want you to explain to me what exactly happened in Port Harcourt. And then I looked and he said I was going to talk with him. I shared my Port Harcourt story. I shared it here, right? Pastor, he came from Port Harcourt. It's a land of greatness and a land of plenty. Listen, I was going to Port Harcourt and all I had, watch this, although God has corrected me recently because I've been running my mouth saying things, I've grown now. God has corrected me recently. In one of my retreats, I've been corrected. So I will I update my curriculum because i keep saying all i had was my bag that bag was a seed i know the kind of faith that brought that bag that bag was a seed i remember dragging that bag and the ministry was about this size then everybody and they were all escorting me as if they were going for a funeral and that was how we went to the park that park in um that park on your way to kaduna just this one yes that Kwangila Park and they dropped me there and I was laughing they were pity because they knew aside from my bus fare all I had left home and abroad in terms of monetary value was 800 naira and I was going to a land I had never gone to but I did not like the woman in 2nd Kings chapter 4 I forgot that I had an ability I kept looking at my rickety bag and all of this listen I dropped at number 23 Quarry Street around to 2 in the afternoon. When I dropped there, I knew I was stupid for sure because no right thinking human being would do what I had done. And I stopped there, 800 naira. And I knew it would be foolish for me to try to look for a hotel to stay. So the closest thing was at least to finish up the 800 naira and eat something with it. So I went to one my mother was sharing something and watch this one thing i knew was that i was going to reign in that land i didn't know how to describe it but i knew there was an ability sometimes you need to come to the end of your road to now find out what you have been calling spare part whereas that is all you need second Kings chapter 4 the woman lost everything the husband used the children as collateral when everything had gone the prophet said what do you have in your house he said nothing except and he said you call it except the vessel is only the oil is small because of the vessel that took it not because it is small once you expand capacity the oil will increase with it he said the oil is much is only because the oil was housed in a small vessel borrow vessel enlarge your capacity and when that woman did that she became rich with it so i went there i'll never forget when i was eating the holy spirit just sent a signal to my spirit and i found out one of my friends that used to live there and i called him and i told him i'm here this and that and that can i come and stay for a while and then i came i went to the house and i stayed there listen my money had finished let me tell you what happened I was broke there was I mean things were bad then his sister was sick when his sister was sick I wasn't happy that she was sick don't misunderstand me but at least I was comforted that 
something <laughs> listen undertakers are not happy that people die but at least it is the make <laughs> are you getting what i'm saying now and so when she said she was sick i prayed for her when she was healed she came with a seed of 1000 naira listen that 1000 naira was what i used to buy my suit to do my first ministration the suit was not what you sell around the suit was this kind you see this kind that they move around with it you just call the man listen let me tell you a secret it's better than many things they hang around nobody will know it's only you that will know ah oh yes are we together now i remember my friend in abuja calling one pastor in port Harcourt and say a mighty man of god is in town and he said all kinds of things about me and the man said and then it happened to be that the man was from my state watch this no 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 play that thing i'm going to sing this song a lot this song we started that's our special number for this night that god's ability song listen god is my witness when i took a bike to go and see the pastor he hosted us and another person we ate in his house and then he went to go and introduce me to the church as soon as i stepped into the building my eyes were open and i gave the pastor three prophecies three prophecies in the church are you with me three days after the prophecy the first one happened 0.5 million came into the church the overseer said call that man he's coming to preach on sunday ah! there is an ability oh, it can open doors when all else fail makata labada yes many things in life can fail don't trust them the real capital in your life is the anointing that one is fail proof certificate can fail internet can fail brother when all else fails reach out deep down god's ability God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. Listen, I went to the church. I bought the suit with the money. I can't remember how much. Dress looks smart. You will never know. Because I, I refused to. I knew that my present was a thing I just had to manage with. In my mind, I was light years ahead of my present. So I wasn't embarrassed by it. Because I knew my physical reality will necessarily, necessarily become my mindset and my perspective. When I went there on that Sunday morning, it was a Sunday morning. I was on my way to come and they sent me the message to preach. They said I should preach about vow. I said I fasted for three days for this opportunity. And you are now sending me the message. God had already given me a word. Listen, the man with the church was a prophet. He doesn't come out until after the service. When you finish preaching, he will now come out and do his thing. When I stepped in and I looked at the people, I'd never seen a congregation of people who were that demonized. And um, there was, you know, we are used to, we write our songs in Zaria, right? So it's very difficult to sing these songs outside because we write our songs, we receive them, we compose them. And I didn't know the kind of song to raise because. Uh, I wasn't used to all those songs. Our songs, you can be humming for 30 minutes. You don't do that there. There was one song that I remember. Now is the time for the new anointing. Gird up your loins and be ready. Every yoke of bondage surely must be broken. That was a song I raised. My goodness. That meeting, that meeting was something else. It was, it, was, it was an amazing meeting. You can imagine the things that God did. After that meeting, I had honorarium. I ate in the house of the pastor. They took me to another place. You know how they are. They are not like the not here that ignore your grace till you die. <laughs> right there, once they see grace, they celebrate it immediately. It's not in the north that they will just look and say, can you help me? No. They know how to, am I lying, pastor? Come on now. They celebrate grace very generously and so we went there and from that meeting they said two weeks after the church was going to have a convention and I was going to be their major speaker listen from that time 
it was one meeting after one meeting after one encounter after one encounter after one encounter after one encounter and within six months my life had changed changed in a way I didn't even know where I was coming from again it had so changed the road had deleted behind me never to return there again that's why I never forget his ability when all else fail today I've stood before kings I've stood before politicians none of my certificates have brought me before these people but an ability of the spirit are you hearing what I'm saying so don't ignore it especially for some of you who are in school read your book but don't fool yourself the world we live in needs an ability of the spirit needs an ability of the spirit let's finish up mm. the primary channel for releasing God's ability is your words 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 where the word of a king is there is power Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2 and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me the spirit entered me when he spake unto me the spirit entered me when he spake unto me an impartation a dispensing of that anointing he said and it set me upon my feet listen there are people sitting now hearing me you will stand up from this meeting and it's like something will suddenly rise within you and you will say i know i may not be any other thing but i'm anointed i may not be any other thing Kabalakata. i was teaching the school of ministry students and i taught them no matter what society says you are not they may be right but they are wrong when they say you are not anointed they may be right they may say you are not fine it may be true they may say you are from a background where the map of your village was not added when they were you don't even use gps to find it they are right but if they ignore the anointing they are wrong the anointing will make nations follow you on their knees and it will be a privilege for them to receive of your grace you will be standing surprised while they are saying thank you God's ability is released through words. Number two, your hands. Listen, please look up. I know that many of us have ignored our hands. I want everybody to look at your hands if you can. These hands. It's working in you. God's ability. God's ability. It's working in you. He's working in you. Listen. These hands you see, brothers and sisters, a hand is a mystery in the realm of the spirit. A hand is not what holds people. That's why the Bible talks about the right hand of God. It talks about the hand of God. The hands are also doors in the spirit. They are channels for releasing the anointing. The work of a man is done through his hands. When you realize that there is an ability on your hands, it will bring upon your life creativity. It will bring upon your life innovations. You will do things through your hands you will never believe possible. These hands, these hands can open the gates of nations to you. These hands can bring kingdoms to their knees. These hands can swing the two leap gates of your destiny open God's ability God's ability is working in me it's working in me brothers and sisters you are getting blessed right now because I am speaking you are not hearing English 
some of you you don't even know what is happening to you as you are listening to me you don't know whether you should sit down whether you should stand up because there is an ability my mouth is a window it's a window revealing the realm of the spirit it's a window communicating the secret place something is happening to your spirit as you are receiving this is not a lecture this is not a lecture it's an ability the power of the holy ghost is working in you <laughs> he's working in you it's god's ability god's ability is working in you it's working in you and so as you speak the opening of your mouth is like the opening of the portals in the spirit and you begin to speak as you communicate those realities you are changing people they don't even know what is happening to them they just know that there is an activity it's not english it's not oratory it's called utterance 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 is by the ability of the spirit it's not a lecture you are changing men you are using words to bring them into an experience they cannot explain the ability of god walking in a man and so the spirit enters you the words come with fire the words come with illumination they do something to your spirit man it's like light some of you sometimes you don't even know what you are receiving you can't tell what is happening to you it's like hammer it's like fire you can't tell it's an ability it comes help that many please it comes from heaven an ability of the spirit God's ability. Be sensitive. I sense the anointing of the Holy Spirit already moving. We're going to pray. It's working in me. That's what I want you to become. So anointed. So full of his ability. The Bible says even God who quickened the dead and uses his mouth to call things. He uses his mouth to make things happen that would not have happened. The prophet said by this time he was not revealing, he was creating. It wouldn't have happened. His words created it. He's working in me. Listen. Many of us have been speaking. It's time for us to be communicators of light and power. It's time for us to be communicators of divine reality. I see the angels of the Lord pouring what looks like oil on people. This is what I see. It's like an anointing coming on people. Strong anointing of the Holy Ghost. God's ability. It's an ability. It's an ability of the Holy Ghost. That the opening of your mouth is a gate in the spirit. Working in me. Working in me. God's ability. It's God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. Shake a tabala baba baba. God's ability. It's God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. Sing it with me, everybody. God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. Shaba baba la kataba la baba. It's God's ability. It's God's ability. It's working in me. Listen. The third way the ability of God is dispensed is through the instrument of your atmosphere. Hmm. Listen, when you carry the ability of God, that ability creates like a spiritual electromagnetic field around you. Anybody that comes within that atmosphere 
possibilities just like many of you are under this atmosphere right now and then sicknesses will leave just by themselves without any prayer there is an ability of the spirit when Saul came into an atmosphere where there was a principality called Samuel the atmosphere affected him and the spirit of prophecy fell upon him when the ability of God is at work in you your atmosphere has prophetic implications your atmosphere has prophetic implications it's working in me yeah. hallelujah God's ability is released by faith you release the ability of God by faith. Let me explain to you what I mean. The ability of the spirit, listen, is released on the strength of conviction. Your persuasion about who God is and what he has put in you sponsors your audacity to take action. Action based on that consciousness is called faith. We've taught a lot of dogma about faith. Faith is nothing based on just human ascent. Faith is the name given to the action you take based on your persuasion of who God is. And then the Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word. Listen, the anointing of the Spirit is the principal capital in your life. Please hear me. Action that is based on your conviction as action that is based on expectation by the ability of the spirit so your hands you expect that people will receive impartations this is how it works brothers and sisters there is an ability in you there is an ability in you you must know this there is an ability in you it's, it's not it's not about some gimmicks please this is not even about falling down it's called the mystery of godliness where God can dwell in a man so your body is like a puppet they are seeing you but there is another agency at work it's called the ability of God that's what will make you a wonder men will keep looking when they think they have exhausted you then you come from another dimension because you are connected to a supply that is eternal not bounded with time no fatigue is not bounded to the limitations of this system it's the ability of God the ability of God reproduce again and again and again and again it's not about trial and error you can gain mastery in the dispensing of his ability yes yes strong need belongs to those who are of full age who by reason of use they have gained mastery it's like fighting God's ability it's God's ability he's working in me that's why we can tell you to come for this meeting and we can guarantee that you will be blessed yes we can guarantee not on the strength of the flesh there is an ability no man's hardness can stand it no matter how stubborn you are it doesn't make any difference because when he shows up the bible says the voice of god upon the waters is mighty listen this is what happens in the teachings there are many people here who have come from other places and they cannot explain what happens to them when they listen to these teachings it's not so much about the revelation there is an ability in it that compels compliance it's called anakazo it's a greek word it's the compelling power of the spirit it is with that ability that we can prophesy over your life and your job and it will change listen it's not just saying change change receive 
and all those things are garbages. What is the ability that sponsors it? For I am a man under authority, he says. And on the strength of that authority, I tell one, go, and he will go. I tell one, come, and he will come. How can cancer die? God's ability. How can a jobless person get a job before Monday? God's ability. How can a, a, a life... I mean, come on, think about it, people. It's the ability of the Spirit. It's not by might. It's not by power. There is an ability bigger than your effort, bigger than your strength. It's God's ability. Help them, please. God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. There are three rewards when you can press to manifest the ability of God. There are three rewards. Reward number one is to become a desirable personality. Nations will desire you because you carry that which is needed. They may criticize you, but they will desire you. There is too much darkness in this world for the careers of the anointing to be ignored. It has nothing to do with ministry. That's the key to being an ambassador. The nations will look for you when you carry this capital called the anointing it will open gates you will become Beulah you will become Hephzibah the delight some land you will become greatly desired when you carry this anointing listen I have met men and women that no level of qualification in life would have given me access to them at this level and I am amazed I am amazed I travel all the time and I am humbled people love me from regions to regions it's not just that they love Joshua Selman many of them don't even know me there is something when you carry it you become a joy of nations when you carry that anointing you become desirable the anointing will make up for your weaknesses it will make up big time listen listen years ago there was somebody who wanted to go to nda and there is a height there is a level to which if you are not as tall as that height they will not take you and the person who wanted to go there was lower than that height and when he went they dismissed him and he went and met the emir of zaria and the emir of zaria sent him with delegates that they should go and tell the commandant and the people that the emir has added his height did you hear what i said that the emir has added his height and they took him that's what the anointing does where you cannot enter others are entering because they are intelligent others are entering because they have connection when they come they ask you what do you have and then you say God's ability God's ability is working in me is working God's ability God's ability is working in me Listen, they may they can't ignore you for too long it won't be too long somebody will be confused you will be needed immediately it won't be too long somebody will be sick demons are still on earth which guarantees that you remain valuable listen listen for as long as there is a demand for your anointing you remain valuable business tells us until you have something you are necessary the anointing keeps you valuable forever 
Stocks can rise and fall. Oil can rise and fall. But the anointing has equal value in every territory. God's ability. Listen. When you carry Naira, when you carry Naira, as soon as you get to London with Naira, Naira is no longer valuable. Is that true? You have to change it to another currency. When you travel to Israel, you have to change the pounds or euro to shekels to be able to use it. When you travel to Asia, you now have to change it to yen and the rest to use it. But the anointing, the way it works in Nigeria, when you get to UK, there is no translation, there is no downgrading. Same sickness, same demons, same challenges. Listen, rich men fall sick. Rich men get confused. Politicians get confused. Have you seen certain businesses that are only for certain people? You only sell pampas for children. Abi, and an adult who is sick, an old man. A young man doesn't need pampas. Are you getting what I'm saying? You, you only bab somebody like me who always wants his hair low. If you want to shine it, let it shine. This is the way you do it. But somebody who keeps his hair doesn't need it. There are certain things in life that are only for a group of people. The anointing is a master capital. It is relevant anywhere, everywhere, and at all times. You need it in business. You need it in your academics. You need it in marriage. Pursue me, students. You need it in your pursue me. No, 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 no. It's not just by the Y, the X. There is an ability. Let me tell you early enough. There is an ability of the spirit. Because you can write an exam well. And somebody can be marking your exam. And your script will fall down. There is an anointing that guarantees it remains there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number one, it brings you. It makes you greatly desired. Number two, the ability of God gives you favor with men. Ah. Please listen to my message, Activating Seasons of Greatness. Favor with men. And it does that in three dimensions. It gives you access to people, access to resources, and access to opportunities. These are the three things any man needs to succeed. Access to people. Access to resources, access to opportunities. The anointing brings access. Not everything is solved by money. Access is greater than money. Access. 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 Hallelujah. It's God's ability. Listen. We went Benin. We went Benin recently for a meeting. I say these things to encourage you. After the meeting, some people came in from Asaba and they shared a very touching testimony. And um, the pastors came in, great ministry, doing great things for God there. When they came in, they said this, that they believe it to be an angel, but they said somebody at a point where the ministry really needed the hand of God. Somebody just entered with one of our teachings and gave them and left. Never to see him again. Never knew him. He was just somebody who came and dropped it and left. And the pastor said when they listened to it, they got all the information and as at the time they were talking to me, they said they had over 200 of the messages and it has revolutionized the people. There are people today who know me and love this ministry, I have never seen them. In fact, 75% of those who get blessed by this ministry who have never set our eyes. Some of them is just one message. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. If you think it's ordinary, try it. Just go online and put anything. I don't care what, just put anything and invite people. There is an angel. There is an angel of the Lord's presence that signifies the word of God and sends it like an envoy. Hallelujah. During my, during my birthday, I think we had compliments 
from over 16 nations 16 nations of the world that have been blessed by the ministry I've not gone to most of them see that but then it's coming there are people who take these messages by themselves and keep spreading that's their ministry that is like a covenant they signed with God brothers and sisters tonight I want you to give up on your strength outside of God I'm reducing your journey towards destiny you will waste your time for nothing and find out after 70 years that this is not how it works but when the ability of God is upon you it will make you a sign and a wonder you will have unusual access access to things you will not pay for the anointing will pay for things for you unusual access hallelujah and finally the third reward for the ability of the spirit working in you is ever increasing honor honor let me tell you what honor is listen honor is not just recognition honor is the discernment of your uniqueness and the ability to reward it if you are not rewarded for your uniqueness it's not honor you can be recognized but when a man recognizes you and is willing to invest in you that is honor To honor is to esteem you with respect and dignity and that you be rewarded for your blessings almost every day of my life there are people blessing me sowing seeds doing all kinds of things i sat down this morning and i was talking to the lord i said lord what are you doing to me this is more than i have bargained for as soon as we arrived this evening i just came in and when i came out i was almost sometimes you see me come and sit down and i just put my head down i'm fighting tears many times because i remain humbled at the hand of god the kind of workers that god has given in this ministry i think they they are even it looks like they believe in the ministry more than me tomorrow is a leaders retreat and Sunday is the workers retreat committed people with their life like madmen you try to coordinate people like that and you see how easy it is of course they are trained of course there are principles but the force of cohesion is the ability of the spirit there is an anointing tonight listen I want everybody hearing the sound of my voice inside and outside you're going to make up your mind tonight and say lord i'm tired of this inferiority and complex it may not have been your fault to have come from the background you came from but it can change i love my father he's a great man and i see most of the things that happen in my life with him as ignorance but there was a time my father spoke to me and said I was going to become a failure in this life and his prayer is that I fail alone and not bring other people about four years ago my father got down on his knees and asked me to pray for him the anointing of the spirit will make you a desire of nations see forget about the meager criticisms you will receive it's nothing compared to the honor is one is to one million it is totally negligible believe me this is what I know this is what my hands have handled and I came with this word tonight the anointing of the spirit is an equalizer it can cover for everything that went wrong so you no longer have an excuse no matter what else fails when you are anointed you still remain valuable the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference we are going to pray and tonight I want us to pray because many of us are going to receive there will be a lot of impartations in this place tonight especially for some of us who just came newly don't just come naively open up your heart 
let something fall on your life and change you forever. I have found my servant. Please give us Psalm 89. Verse 20. Psalm 89 verse 20. 89 verse 20. Help us media. It's his ability. That's why my secret place. Listen. My secret place remains my greatest asset. Not ministrations. The man of God, Apostle Johnson Suleiman, said something that blessed me one time. Listen. He said he was in the secret place praying and building and planning. And something happened. A big man, supposedly a politician, big man, he came and spoke to him and said he wanted to see him. And uh, he was with God. One hour he didn't come out. Two hours he didn't come out. Three hours he didn't come out and the wife was already getting embarrassed that how can you leave a big man like this and they went to knock and one of his daughters went to knock and then he opened the door and she was saying daddy why attend to this man let him go and he looked at her compassionately and he said my daughter sit down he said do you know why this man is here he's here because of what i am doing but he's not here because he likes me he's here because there is an anointing he needs he needs direction he needs a prophetic word. If I stop doing what I'm doing, he will not come back again. Let him wait. That's why my secret place is the greatest. You don't find me gallivanting around. I'm like a herbalist. You don't see me strolling around and then buying orange, peeling it and just moving around. No, because you are gathered here tonight because you love God. It is true. But you have come to hear a man who you consider to be anointed and the only reason why you will keep coming and listening and the only reason why nations will keep coming is because of this ability the miracle service is by the corner there are sick people hiv cancer all kinds of oppressed people in this place right now there are families that have traveled kilometers to come and they are trusting God for a touch. And so, the greatest publicity of a believer, men of God, get this, is the secret place. That's the place you receive strength. That's the place you receive innovation. That is where you receive wisdom. It says, I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil, I smeared him with oil that activated an ability let's look at the next three verses 21 with whom my hand shall be established my arm shall also strengthen him the enemy shall not exact upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him i will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him 24 but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted he said thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side listen my prayer is that the least among us here will be as great as david but you know if you take it from the standpoint of intelligence there are people who are a thousand times more intelligent than you your advantage in the kingdom is the backing of the spirit Please listen. If you keep me side by side with brilliant people, I may not have too much to say. If you keep me side by side with intellectuals, I may have something to say, but maybe not much. If you keep me around older people, they have experience. I may only have little to say. If you keep me around people, the world is full of cynical people. Even if I want to bless them, they will not believe in me either because I'm not their tribe or because of certain parameters so my bailout is the anointing I got the anointing upon my life jealously I can lose everything but not his presence and the anointing that it brings it says but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horns listen 
God can exalt the horn of a man. God spoke to us that this is the season of the rain. And the rain is already falling. I tell you, people's stories are changing. God is taking people to newer levels of wealth, newer levels of the anointing, newer levels of the spirit. Inside and outside, some of you are standing, there are no seats standing by the fence. Listen, you are face to face with destiny. It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit. If you've never believed in the ability of God in you, I want you to believe it. Ephesians 3.20 and then we'll pray. Ephesians chapter 3, please, verse 20. Help us, media. Verse 20. 20. 320. Everyone read it together. Now unto him. Who is the him? The Almighty God, who is able to do, say God is able to do in me whatever He desires. God is able to do in me. God is able to do in me. Years ago, when I saw these meetings, I I, I, I would say I didn't believe them, but it was difficult to explain it. See, let me tell you something. There are times a vision can be so great, there's no point trying to share it. Because nobody can understand. But only be consistent. When you begin to birth wonders, then the world will know. He's a mighty God. And I want you to believe Him. He can change anyone's story. God can make you the song of many. Like David the song upon the mouth of women and children, young and old. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on the other world. Oh, sing, all fountains of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on the other world. Listen, the Lord is giving me an instruction. 
there are at least 15 people that I see a strong anointing is going to come upon them please let me have them outside here just those 15 people who are going to pray but the Lord is ministering to me because he's activating something it's a substance of the spirit upon those 15 people I'm about to pray right now and the angels of the Lord will separate those people mightily by the power of the Holy Spirit Father, in the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Lord, where are those 15 people? Right now, in the name of Jesus, let the fire of God draw them out right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, right now, inside and outside. I send the word in the realm of the Spirit. Let there be that activation inside and outside those portals. I open it in the name of Jesus. You can't stand it. No, you can't stand it. It's an ability from heaven. It's an ability from heaven. An ability from heaven. You will never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. It's by the power of the Holy Ghost. Same 
power that raised Jesus from the dead. The same power that raised the Christ from the dead. Working in me. In business, it is working in me. In ministry, it is working in me. In leadership, it is working in me. In family, it is working in me. Miracles are happening in 
your life, not just physical healings, a change. Doors are opening in the spirit. I see doors opening. I see doors opening. I see doors. Doors of power. Doors of influence. The Lord is giving men and women speed. I hear speed in my spirit. I hear speed. You will run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Run like Elijah. By the power of the Holy Ghost. God's ability, God's ability is working in me. Hallelujah. 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 There are levels of favor. Only the anointing can bring. There are levels of increase. Only the anointing can bring. There are levels of grace and glory. Only the anointing can bring. I like you to pray that every door of favor you need to enter, may the anointing bring you into it. Lift your voice and pray. The distance between you and a major breakthrough is one door of favor away. No man can stop you. I tell you, when the anointing is upon you, you are invincible. No power can stop you. Walks. You will climb mountains when the anointing is upon you. When men think you are born with, you will rise by an agency that they cannot understand. It's his ability. It's his ability. Hallelujah. 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 Just one last prayer point. I want you to insist. Listen. I want you to insist and say between now and the end of this month, you must have a testimony. Insist. Lift your voice and pray. Don't pray. Pray of cowardice. You are praying the will of God. Shabakata. By the anointing. Let it bring proofs. Supernatural testimonies. In my life. In my finances. In my body. Pray. In my academics. In my marriage. When it is by the Holy Ghost, it will work. If it is by the Holy Ghost, the ideas will come. If it is by the Holy Ghost, it will work.
Hallelujah. Koinonia, listen to me. From today, I want you to walk in the consciousness that I'm anointed. It has nothing to do with a man of God. You need the anointing to birth ideas, financial ideas. You need that anointing for creativity. Your mind will not think independent of the anointing. You need that idea. You need that creativity. The anointing will bring direction to your life. It's God's ability. It's not your ability. It's God's ability. Hallelujah. Father, I pray in the name of your son, Jesus. From today, let no one here be ordinary. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm praying over you from the depth of my heart. And I prophesy to you that the mountains that have stood before you and the next dimension in your work with God, may the anointing of God turn them into testimonies. The believer is a possessor. The believer is a possessor. Blessed is she that believes, for unto her there shall be a performance. In the name that is above all names, everything that has stopped the grace upon your life from finding expression, everything that has stopped the grace of God upon your life from being recognized by those who it was sent to, I tear off that veil tonight in the name of Jesus. Everything that has blocked the flow of grace from the realm of the spirit to you, it leaves heaven but it doesn't get to you. Every pathway in the spirit, by whatever mystery that has been blocked, I open it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spiritual inaccuracy in the name of Jesus, every missing the mark spiritually, every disalignment, everything that makes you get it but not complete, you receive things from heaven but you don't get the full details. Right now in the name of Jesus, I supply power to your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, some of you have dreams, but you have an incomplete dream. Just when the information you need in the dream is about to come, then you wake up. You know it was of God. It was holding the key to clarity, but something covered it. Right now, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, may there be spiritual accuracy. I speak in spiritual accuracy. I prophesy spiritual accuracy. Everything that has made you timid and fearful and made you think you are nobody and that the anointing cannot find expression in your life. Tonight I curse that spirit. By the God of heaven I curse fear. I curse intimidation. I curse timidity. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I prophesy to you in this season, arise. Arise and shine. It's your season of the rain. Every dryness in your life, it is swallowed up by the rain. The Bible says, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. Isaiah 32, 15. Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. And then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine. And a fruitful vine will be counted for a forest. Everything that has covered your glory, a man can walk with his glory covered. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
may the one who is the lifter up of men by the agency of the anointing of the Holy Spirit may your glory begin to speak from today I prophesy may your glory begin to speak from today bless his name he is worthy of all the praise worthy of all the glory hallelujah let's hold hands together and just pray in the spirit in one minute everyone hold hands together shalabrato supaka Hold hands together. Zeke prarusa sebra digi baratu soso prahata kataya. Please take it serious. Make sure you are praying inside, outside. Mande la capros capre ashi behere to supre tiara. Every time spent in your presence brings with it transformation. Brings with it light. Kabato zata predeke shibra hata baria da balada bos. Ninda kapraska da barike to shibredi alarabos. Pray in the spirit. Lika taro saderianda kapariada. Release the power and the grace. Kela tu shebrandizia. Ligeto pratoza sibredi gede gede balarabos. Embroto soto kata barada balada bakasa da brede gede gede balarabos. Jige dege 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 de kaparoto soprendi garabalara bosh impratos kaprato shakate prosata labarite kosi gete balata inte katorato zekete keria da bolorosh ingre dosuzo bakata balara barre to kosu preti gedi balara ba manda kata prata kata barada barada balada bakaria de balara bosh zekete kete kete balara bosh. Embroto so so prekete kete 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 balara bos. Japra to kato prate sekete le bokorit. Embra du so so prekete barada balara ba. Shakata prata kata rada balara ba. Lika to prasi badiara bos. Keep praying. Lika pras kabaranda bash kabrateke so bariate balaraba. Alleluia. Alleluia. Father, visit me tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Visit me tonight. Change my life. Visit me tonight in the name of Jesus. Jaka parato ko parado shaprete kete la baroto subaya. Likete proto sobrete kete barada balada ba. Strange visitations by the Spirit. Lepro sada barato ko tu barada ba. Hallelujah. 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 Last prayer point. Every spirit of distraction, every spirit of familiarity, every spirit of carelessness in the presence of God that will make me miss my word tonight, I challenge you in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. Some of you are not praying. Open your mouth and pray. Shalabako pratala balikatai. Lord, I will not be careless with your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening, everybody. The Lord will change your life in a remarkable way this night. In the name of Jesus. 
greet someone by your left and right and please sit down and be ready to write and listen. God wants to speak to us seriously this night. Hallelujah. God wants to speak to us seriously tonight. I truly believe that tonight's meeting is a destiny encounter. But every meeting is a destiny encounter. But particularly tonight, my heart is heavy to just offload a lot of very serious things this night. Hallelujah. I love it when God puts it in my heart to challenge our lives and our destinies. Tonight's talk is a very serious talk and I want you to pay attention. Don't just write, listen and receive. Amen. Someone is changing this night. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the coal, touch my lips. Here I am. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the coal, touch my lips. Here I am. Would you take the coal? Touch my lips. Here I am. Take the coal. Touch my lips. Here I am. Spirit of the living God, speak to your people. You have instructed this meeting and you have brought a word tonight. Someone's destiny is dependent on this word. There are people following online. There are people listening. There are thousands and millions more that will listen after tonight. I pray, oh God, that you will put your anointing and your grace upon this teaching. May it not be trivialized, oh God. I pray that you activate destinies in a strange way tonight. In the name of Jesus, answer the questions that are in the hearts of your people. Release the anointings that they desire for the next level of their lives. Lord, we thank you for people here who are sick, oppressed, who are here just trusting you for a touch. Some do not even know what the name of their issues are. But I pray that they will receive a touch from God tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Ecclesiastes 10.15 Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 Jesus we bless you it's always a pleasure to bring God's word and every time the word of God comes it comes not just to challenge us but to change us if you are not changed by the word listen if the word of God cannot change you then nothing else can change you are we together because the word of god created the heavens and the earth praise the lord ecclesiastes 10 verse 15 read it slowly read it intelligently read it with understanding one to read ah no 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 slowly doesn't mean quietly one to read He never said the labor of the foolish, whereas some of them would have found out why some escaped. But he says, the labor of the foolish. The problem is not the labor. The problem is those who are laboring. There is a condition. The Bible says the labor of the foolish. Does what? Wearied every one of them. Why? Because he knoweth not. That's what makes him foolish. Because he does not know how to go to the city there is a way to go to the city there is a formula to go to the city listen please there is a system that can take a man from where he is to his place in destiny and the bible says 
the foolish and the wise do the same thing seemingly they are all laboring but then the bible says it wearied every one of them and this is why it worries them it says they do not know how it did say they do not know the name of the city they know what they want they know where they want to go to but the system the system to take them from where they are to where they need to be you know i've said it again and again that believers are not confused as to the outcome of their lives what they want we all know what we want or at least we have an idea the challenge usually is the understanding of what it will take to leave us from where we are to where we need to be and i pray that god will open our eyes in the name of jesus write this word down destiny write this word down destiny destiny the word destiny is a very interesting word there's almost no man of god who has not spoken about this word we love it so much we dream about it we discuss it but the bible says listen please that there is a path listen there is a path that seemeth right but then it says the end thereof are the ways of death are we together now the word destiny simply means your predefined place of fulfillment write it down please i'll give you a few definitions quickly your predefined place of fulfillment predefined means that you do not guess in the loins of prophecy and in the loins of time there is a place allocated for you please listen there is a place in destiny there is a place in prophecy allocated for each and every one of us and your fulfillment and your relevance in life is tied to not only your discovery but your arrival you there is a condition there is a place where you must arrive to be able to find the joy and the fulfillment of living it's called destiny the second definition of destiny is the place where your assignment finds full expression your destiny represents the place where your assignment your purpose on earth your reason for living your destiny represents the place where you can say experientially that i am living the reason for which i am born i am making impact number three i went ahead of myself the third definition of destiny is the place of notable and consistent impact the place of notable and consistent impact no longer the place of desire no longer the place of ambition that you have gotten to a place where your impact is notable your impact is significant the last definition of the word destiny destiny also represents a place where you have earned the right to transform lives and to watch those lives transform others not just that you are transforming lives you are fulfilling destiny to the extent to which you have earned the right to transform lives and you have the privilege in your lifetime of watching those lives you have transformed transform others hallelujah dr miles munro of blessed memory a man who has changed my life so much i honor him in life and in death he said this he said the greatest tragedy in life is not death 
the greatest tragedy in life is a life without a purpose a life without a meaning a life without a reason for living that you get up in the morning and there is no constructive definition as to what justifies your living there are so many people angry and frustrated in life listen please we attempt to cover the need for activating and fulfilling destiny with many things we try education and then you know after many years of laborious study we don't seem to make sense out of our sacrifice we try marriage and for many people it's hell they are living in hell literally we try money we try several things in an attempt to get to that place but it doesn't seem to bring that fulfillment and satisfaction and many people in Nigeria in their old age are full of regrets are full of pain anointed people inclusive so tonight I want to challenge us there's nothing that gives me joy as seeing an individual or a people listen please living a life of purpose and a life of meaning your need for the anointing is useless without an understanding of destiny your need for financial prosperity your need for a wife or a husband your need for children your need for influence is absolutely useless if you do not understand God's idea of destiny say there is a place for me in life I want you to shout it with conviction listen there is no man born of a woman I know you've heard it but listen to it with an anointing on it there is no man born of a woman regardless of the conditions that surrounded your birth dr miles muro said they may be illegitimate parents but there are not there may be illegitimate relationships but there are no illegitimate children the concept of an illegitimate child is just a social cultural term it does not exist there's no such thing as an illegitimate child are we together everybody that appears on this earth appears for a reason intentionally allowed to come nobody listen nobody has the power in himself to just fabricate a child and bring him in this realm are we together now so every one of us seated here and those following and listening we have a place in life and destiny but so many people never get to discover it so many people never get to live in the reality in fact it's, it's cheaper to not even discover it than to discover it and never actualize it in your lifetime you can justify your pain by saying i never had an opportunity to know but then it's painful when you know that this is the prophetic blueprint of my life and then you never get to live it are we together there is no one sent here on earth by mistake you just arrive and then you say lord why am i here and god will say ah sorry oh, let's check why is he here exactly no 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 no. we can choose to refuse to become the prophecy upon our lives we can reject god's program for our lives and create another program by ourselves but anyone who will find fulfillment especially in this end time there are men and women who must align to the purposes of the kingdom listen you are not here to create a program for yourself you are here to work in a program that has been predestined are we together Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 5. He was speaking to a little boy called Jeremiah. Revealing to him his prophetic destiny. This was a little boy who was destined to be a prophet. To speak the purposes of God over nations. And here he was having an encounter with the Lord. And then he was receiving a download of the blueprint. What he would live for. What he would die for. And here's what he says. Before I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and I did what ordained thee a prophet to the nations so on on Jeremiah's day of birth Jeremiah's mother would have held him and looked at him and said wow little child very helpless but in the loins of prophecy that was a prophet 
when you read further it begins to reveal the extent of his prophetic influence how that he was vested with the responsibility of not only speaking God's counsel to individuals but to kings to nations to nobles it was up to Jeremiah to never fulfill that there was a man in the Bible called Elisha and the Bible tells us that Elisha was a farmer but in that farmer was a prophet a prophet who would do mighty things he would have died a farmer because he did not know the road to the city but something happened in his life may you find the road map to your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ let me tell you you see jealousy look up please jealousy resentment huh? all of this criticism backbiting are a direct product of the confusion usually when we meet a stumbling block on our road to destiny and we are surrounded by all kinds of vagueness and confusion that idleness in our confusion will make us to turn and when you see another life working with a level of dexterity and accuracy it usually will create a reaction that reaction is what we call resentment that reaction is what we call criticism are we together now so it's not about saying stop criticizing people you have to be too busy in your idleness you there is nothing else to do but when you find something that occupies you the time span a mark for you will look too short the, a sense of urgency will drive you like a madman Are we together now? Everyone has a destiny in Christ. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7. Jesus who was a portrait of our life. The firstborn among the many brethren. In the similitude of our life said this. Said, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. To do thy will, O God. Lo, I come. This is why I came. When Jesus showed up no confusion he understood exactly the blueprint of his life when he went to the temple in luke chapter 4 the bible says it was given to him the scroll of Isaiah, the prophecy that isaiah prophesied about him and then he began to read the spirit of the lord is upon me because this and that and that look at a little boy at age 12 he had discovered his assignment already was about at the temple studying and preparing for a great destiny to an extent that he told his parents he said ah, do you not know are you no longer uh, um, well not bible students but do you no longer go to the temple to hear the prophecy mary have you forgotten i thought you said the angel spoke to you why are you questioning my zeal to fulfill the reason for which i was born 33 and a half years and he made an impact with his life that for eternity we will never recover truly truly i believe in long life but sincerely speaking it's not how long you live but how effective there is a way a man's one year can become someone else's lifetime and impact in one year can be so transgenerational jesus died at 33 and a half or a quarter years old but out of that 33 years only three years were used in active ministry are we together lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me tonight i want to share with us on the requirements for manifesting your destiny that's not a topic it's just what i want to do now the requirements the cost dimension many of us are aware i'm not so much about the discovery as it is manifesting it I've, I've done a teaching discovering your purpose you can get it and several other teachings along the um, the lines of destiny but tonight the lord put it in my heart to teach us there is a system everybody said there is a system you're not going to walk to to your place of destiny just um by default nothing works in life until you walk it nothing moves in life until you move it right newton's first law of mechanics nothing will move until you move it you sit down the way you are nothing will change you will grow older the only thing that will change is your age you are celebrating 35 36 
then you jump to 47 48 but your life is not moving do you know my concept of birthdays i truly believe in celebrating birthdays but birthday is not just the fact that you were born in my opinion birthdays should be celebrated only when purpose is discovered and is being lived you truly do not have a right you have a right to thank god for being born but you have no right to celebrate your birthday what are you celebrating you should celebrate the reason for living if your life is so impactful you will not even be the one celebrating you would have blessed people too much they will be too grateful to leave you when you have to call everybody and remind them ha ah, hey, jimmy Abba, you mean you, you, are, you are just remembering that it's my birthday it's a message read the writings on the wall your life is not notable enough there are people they prepare for their birthdays one year as soon as they finish one they start what do I do for him for all that he has done in my life some of us harass people we have never invested in their lives two weeks to my birthday said just to let you know that it's my birthday and you send a general bulk message again reminder and then out of those 200 people maybe only two or three it's a message it's not for you to be angry it's a sign that your life is not blessing anybody notably let me tell you no matter how dark and depraved people are when you bless their lives they become too grateful to not notice it is god speaking to us i want to share with you some strong requirements you must be determined to not just succeed but fulfill your destiny my concept of success is fulfilling your assignment not just moving forward not just getting married not just finishing school not just getting a job or a promotion or a raise all those things are periphery the, the truth is listen listen let me tell you if you do not find out god's goal for your life and you are not living it you are wasting your time and you are wasting the time of others amen are we together i'd like you to pray a prayer before we go into the details of the requirement and say lord any price for my destiny i receive grace to pray it lift your voice if you are not ready you don't have to pray you won't go to hell but be sure that you are not going to rise any price for my destiny lord i'm tired of living my life carelessly i'm growing older time is going there's nothing that is giving my life meaning as i listen to your word now lord if it will sting me let it sting me but my heart my mind my spirit is open let no price be too great oh god for my destiny let no price be too great for my destiny are you praying lord there is an anointing upon my life the nations must drink from there is no price that is too great make sure you are praying don't be careless tonight you are about to hear something that will change your life some of you change your lineage because of you through you you've been complaining about what has happened now god is giving you a choice to make a decision that probably your parents did not make lord let pain let pain not stand my way to greatness give me grace to conquer pain give me grace to conquer shame hallelujah let's write number one requirement to fulfilling your god-given destiny the first requirement is an encounter with jesus a genuine encounter with jesus not coming out for an altar call that's important but an encounter with Jesus. John 7. When you read John 7. John 3, I'm sorry. Verse 7. Actually, it's 3 to 7. John chapter 3. The encounter 
that Nicodemus had with Jesus. Now understand this. The context of that scripture is very interesting because Nicodemus was a teacher of the law. Nicodemus was a doctor. He was a philosopher. He was intelligent. He was a graduate. He was even employed. Nicodemus was not a small man. He was a man of influence. But every time together with his colleagues they kept insulting jesus castigating jesus but they were secret fears and frustration nicodemus got to a point where his life was not making sense and then he sneaked in by night and came to jesus and then he says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him and then jesus said verily verily i say unto you right he said except ye be born again you shall not see the kingdom of god now he, he begins to talk how can i be born again will i enter into my mother's womb and then verse 5 he now says um you know verily verily i say unto you except ye be born of the water and of the spirit then you cannot enter the kingdom right then jesus now begins to speak and all of that and says the wind blow it where it listed verse 7 that's where i'm really going to verse 7 this is what he said marvel not that i say unto you ye must be born again it didn't say ye may it didn't say ye should being born again is not an advice being born again is a requirement writing jam is not an advice writing jam is a requirement having five credits no story is not an advice are we together is the necessary and sufficient condition to gain admission let me tell you life has requirements there is a cut off point the starting point is born again it's amazing how many people want to walk with god but they don't want to be born again they want to be around church they want to be around the things of god they want to have christian names being born again is more than just confessing jesus being born again is prioritizing god that God becomes your obsession, your priority, and your motivation. There's no hope of leaving him. That's born again. Because he, he, he explained it. He said you must be born of two things. The water and the spirit. The water there represents the ministry of the word. The cleansing power of the word. An encounter with the Holy Ghost. Being born again is not just cheap talk where you just come and stand i believe in you you are pinching yourself and laughing it may be a starting point but i'm telling you being born again is much more than jesus becoming one of those important deities there is a herbalist at home there is jesus there is the charm it's just that he's the most important of all of them you are not born again please i'm saying this whether you are listening here and you are or you are following online if you have any other charm any other talisman any other material point of reference point of of activating the realm of the spirit outside of christ and everything that is consistent with his character you are not born again very simple are we together dear you can't tell me you are born again and then under certain conditions you can receive something you know and many of us listen many of us young people you may be laughing at me but there's something they gave you from home they say look life this life is more than what you are seeing that is true you need help that is true but the, where the problem starts is what you are giving they pray for you and give you a bible and then they squeeze one charm that looks like an arrow they tell you to put it under your box you are not born again no sir see let me tell you anything that the lord jesus cannot bring in your life don't let anybody fool you that it will happen it may look like it's happening but you see because jesus said i am the door do you know what that means i am the legal access point to everything in the kingdom he never said i am the only one he said i am the door any other person can enter the house through windows but there is always a side effect you will not see it yet until the charm starts working so the charm will give you money and take your fertility are you getting the point now that's not the discussion with the herbalist he himself does not know the side effect because he is practicing so you collect the charm you start building the house but then you find out that you cannot give birth again 
or you give birth to 12 children and none of them become useful any other door listen there are many like this place now if we see you smuggling yourself through this window we know you are an arm robber you are a thief are we together there is a legitimate entrance don't tell me you are entering which way are you following jesus said i am the door i am the door don't tell me you are getting rich don't tell me you are getting blessed don't tell me you are increasing it matters to me whether you are following the door then i will know whether your success will have side effect on me let me tell you don't come close to anybody until you study the systems around his life and how he is doing what he is doing how she is doing what she is doing are we together now an encounter with jesus when you encounter jesus you will not only love him you will follow him you will not only love him you will serve him you will not only love him you will live for him you will not only love him you will influence others into that encounter with him has nothing to do with ministry has nothing to do with being a man of god it is the effect of an encounter when saul of tarsus in the book of acts had an encounter with the lord jesus christ it changed his life forever remember what's the name of that short man in the bible zacchaeus when zacchaeus had an encounter with jesus what happened it changed his life forever zacchaeus just come down i'm going to your house at once zacchaeus changed when he met the centurion it changed there were other people i believe that jesus met that were not recorded in the bible because you see the way they had a soft spot towards him one of them was joseph of arimathea i believe he was a great man and because he was caesar's friend you can liken it to being in the same political party so he would not be outspoken about jesus but secretly secretly he loved him have you had an encounter with jesus enough to fuel your life for a lifetime if the lifespan do you know it's a terrible thing when people love god on campus or love god before marriage i have seen many people who used to love god on campus you see them today they are hardly born again some were campus fellowship presidents some held crusades have you seen some of our parents you see them drinking beer and he said daddy do something about it say look i held crusade in benin i held crusade in abuja i did three days dry you see them giving you what is supposed to be a good accolade and they say i've tried everything so don't even bring this issue of man of god you are just starting before you were born we served god have you heard of ebenezer obey i was in his band have you heard of uh, so 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 and so i i sang there they carry the pain of their frustration and make it look as though it's serving god that brought that to them it's a terrible thing for someone to say i once was with god and now i've left him no sir he said ye who have continued with me not those who started ye who have continued with me lift your voice in one minute and say lord i'm with you forever i'm with you forever i'm with you forever mm. lift your voice and pray i need you to secure your place because some of us are already one leg in one leg out the pain of recession is about sweeping you ah jesus jesus how i trust you how i prove the oracle jesus jesus precious jesus oh for grace to, to trust you. lift your voice and say lord what shall separate me from your love not famine uh -uh. not cgpa not recession i am with you and i'm with you forever whether things work well or not whether ministry works well or not is a decision i have made lift your voice and pray any other person can make his decision any other person can say anything lord i know that i may be angry if i don't succeed but leaving you is not part of the equation 
is a soul covenant is a fraternity with you in life and in death I pledge allegiance to the land with all my strength with all I am I will see of an encounter you will raise your children after your encounter don't tell me you are a Christian father are you hearing what I'm saying and you give birth to a child and then you don't care what the child is watching you don't care whether the child is going to church are we together many little children that's why I love our little ones in Koinonia you may think they are not understanding what we are teaching but it's entering their spirit we live in a society where parents, they, they just, their assignment is just to give birth to children. They give them education. They give them every other thing but Jesus. Are we together? Yeah. You're going to church, you leave the baby with a house help. Are we together? You come back from church and you sit down. Other adults are watching certain things that may not be good for the child. You don't care. Let me tell you, if you have an, an encounter with Jesus, everything you do, whoever is under your roof will do it. Oh, come on. You stay under my roof as I'm blasting tongues. I want to hear your own in your room. Shakatakataba. Likotopakaya. In your room, you are responding. You, you don't stay under my roof. I'm paying for your life and you are living your life then it means you are an adult enough if you stay under my roof you will serve Jesus I assure you please take what I am saying seriously our society is depraved today because many parents went to church but they did not have encounter so they only gave us what was valuable to them which was education as good as it is they didn't give us Jesus some of us were on our way to destruction but God intercepted. Ah, hallelujah. You've heard me say it again and again. When a lady brings a gentleman, a lady brings a gentleman to her parents, they don't ask whether he's born again and serious with God. Let me tell you, in one minute, I can know whether you are born again or not, even if you wear suit. Ha, ha. This is a culture. This is a culture. Are we together? So we give our daughters to foolish men who are anti-kingdom. We give our sons to wicked women who are anti-Christ. And we, this, this combination produces nonsense. That's what is destroying our, our generation now. What we are reaping is the carelessness of 30 years. The carelessness of 40 years. And if we do not correct it. Let me tell you. The key is not insulting the government. There must be a generation that is addicted. And no nonsense about God. Imagine a man getting married with his wife. Two of them pray in tongues. No problem. Two of them love God. No problem. As you give birth to your child. Before wicked men hold him. You hold him as the father. Shakata bakataya. You are prophesying. 
What are you doing? I'm prophesying. Oh, stop that thing. Are you joking? That's how I married in the first place. I call you blessed. You came out from my loins. I prophesy. You will. Everything is born after its kind. I will not love God and give birth to an armed robber. So you prophesy. If I'm your father, you should look like it. I'm showing you what lack of an encounter has produced in our society. To an extent, to an extent that if you are godly, they look at you as if something is wrong with your life. You have to explain godliness, something that should be institutionalized. Go outside of Zaria and see a young lady. If a young lady likes a guy, do you know how she attracts him? She starts singing bad and nonsense songs, thinking that's what he likes. Are you getting the point now? So you sing all of the songs thinking that by singing that the guy will be attracted. Brother, shout no way. Abba. Abba. After reading Proverbs 31. Uh -uh. Ladies, you too shout no way. Don't bring shell and NMPC and deceive anybody. Do you have an encounter with Jesus? Listen. Don't just say I have an encounter with God. God means anything. Do you have an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God? Let me prove to you that a man has an encounter with Jesus. You are unashamed about submitting to his values. If you have met Jesus, then you must be ready to submit to his values. Don't come and meet me with your philosophy, your ideology. You have not met Jesus. Listen. If you are here in Koinonia, if you are truly under this grace, you should have submitted to our way of doing things. So when you see somebody who is under this grace, you know at once the way you talk, the things you do, your passion for God. You can easily know someone who just came to Koinonia for the first time. Sometimes people come to share testimonies here and once in a while they can be a bit unruly or a bit vulgar and I see the reaction in people. It's like, no, 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 this is anti koinonia culture. I can see it in you. So why will you go out with somebody who just told you he's born again? Born again is like an ID card. You can see it is visible. Okay. This, 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 thing, this thing is, I'm speaking from my spirit. Some relationships should be cancelled. Yeah, we cancel it in Jesus' name. I'm not asking you. You will see what will happen from the prophecy. Because some of you are insisting. I counsel it in the name of Jesus Christ. Destroy your life in the name of love. Love is not stupidity. Are we together? If you have had an encounter with Jesus. You must have the value system of the kingdom. Somebody comes to your house. Everything he's saying is nonsense. Every wrong word. Do you know there are words you don't even have to be born again? Societally speaking, when you are getting to certain political positions, they culture you. When you, when you are going to see the Queen of England, or they culture you. You learn how to speak. There are indices that show you have encountered God. Number one, it's your words. Not just dressing, your words. You speak nonsense. You say anything, anytime. You have a come on. Please, please. All kinds of selection in your phone. There is the one for when you are high, you, you just take it high. Then whenever you feel guilty, when you listen to messages on rapture, the coming of Christ, you just switch. Truly, you have not encountered Jesus. Don't laugh as I'm telling you this because it's a serious thing. You are not going to bribe God into fulfilling destiny. It has to be his way. Everybody say an encounter with Jesus. Now lift your voice and pray. And say, Lord, anything trying to prove in my life that I've not had an encounter, drive it. Drive it far. Drive it far. Drive it far. Some of you need to make some calls to certain people. Call that gentleman and tell him, I love you, but apostle just preached a message. I can't marry you. It can't work again. Sorry about the time I've wasted. It can't work again. It's as simple as that. Some of us who are about to get married, some of us who have children, it's time to get back, bring the cross to your house, bring Christian values to your house. Don't live a life that is vulgar. Don't raise children that are wayward. Indiscipline, no sir, no sir.
Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. You see, these are the things that should be discussed in church. I'm telling you this. Are we together? Yeah. How many elders are not born again? We just array the names of people. When did this one join our church? 1991. When did this one join our church? 98. If we give this person and don't give it, he'll be angry. Well, let's give him something. Are you seeing that? And then you now pick somebody just because he's old. He's the elder in charge of marriage counseling. You have never supervised what he's teaching the young people. And they come around and he's teaching nonsense. Do you think all this idea of beating wife, do you think people just invented it? Someone advised somebody and say, I did it, it worked. Do it, it works. Let's return Jesus to our lives. Oh. Let's return Jesus to our lives. You know what I'm saying is not a lie. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So please, if you are here today, at the end of the service, I'll make an altar call. Please, I want you to examine your concept of born again. If you have not submitted to the values of the kingdom, you need Jesus. Please, let's not argue this thing this night. You need Jesus. I don't care whether you are praying in tongues. No, sir. Are we together? Then your life, then your home. If my shirt has palm oil, you spill palm oil and you come with a white shirt and hug me and I hold you there if you leave won't you see some stain something about, show me what implicates you and shows us you have met Jesus don't just say you met Jesus the Bible says in the book of Acts in the Jerusalem council when they saw Peter they saw these guys they knew they were timid but they knew they had been with Jesus they saw them when they were timid but now they had seen them men of conviction let's sit down and continue an encounter with Jesus, number one. Number two, now that we have cleared the way, I want us to sit down and talk now because this second point that I want to bring is really where the anointing is this night. So what you have even received now is an appetizer. Here comes the main course. May you eat it, every part of it, in Jesus' name. The second key the second key to fulfilling your destiny, the second key to fulfilling your God-given destiny is the power of preparation and thoroughness. Write it down. The power of preparation and thoroughness. Preparation. Thoroughness. Preparation. Thoroughness. The power of preparation. The power of thoroughness. Second Chronicles 27, please, verse 6. Second Chronicles 27, verse 6. Second Chronicles 27. I like us to read it. It's projected. One to read. So Dotham became uh -huh, because he prepared his ways before the Lord. What was the secret of his exploits? What was the secret of his might? He prepared his way. And he did that in the presence of God. Under his supervision. Preparation. There is power in preparation. Write it down. There is power in preparation. We live in a time and a generation, especially for we young people. There is such an obsession for manifestation. Such an obsession for manifestation. Oh, let me prove I'm a millionaire by age 20. Let me prove I'm this and that. Let me prove there's nothing wrong with those things. But preparation. 
preparation. There is such an appetite of bringing our future into our today to prove a point. And we destroy ourselves because we lack that ingredient of preparation. What do you do during preparation? Number one. What do you do during preparation? Number one. You learn and understand the principles of the kingdom. I call them the mysteries of the kingdom. That's what you do during times of preparation. Your times of preparation are largely times of learning and understanding the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. God has called me into an extraordinary ministry. God has told me I have an apostolic or a prophetic ministry. God has told me I'm going to the nations. Every time in my dream, I see myself changing people. Thank you, man of God. But what are you doing about it? Oh, I'm already buying suits. God has even shown me who my wife will be. That's not preparation. You are, that's carelessness. I assure you, you will not arrive that way. Preparation. This great ministry that God is giving me, what will it take? What do I know? Do I understand administration? Do I understand finances? This great ministry will be fueled by the word and by the anointing. Have I understood the mysteries? Listen, I want you to put your life on a project. Find out all the tools you will be using in the place of destiny and begin to source for them. Find out. There are many tools we need. You need the anointing in the place of destiny. Have you discovered how to bring it and keep it in your life and multiply it in your life? Number two, you need access to revelation, the working knowledge of the word of God. What keys do you have in your hand? Show me the keys you are accessing and I'll see whether you will get to your tomorrow. Finances. Our destinies are capital intensive. So they require a lot of finances. Show me what mentorship. Show me what book you are reading. Oh, apostle, I'm doing business. You will fail. That's not the key. The key is to receive knowledge. The key is to change your mindset. Not to offer products and services yet. That's the last step of the equation. We love manifestation. We love manifestation. I receive text messages all the time. And most of what people we, we, we like programs we like events conferences conventions someone sent me a text that he had a vision that we're holding six conventions in koinonia every year i said shift that vision to the future it's certainly not happening now no convention for what what is the meaning of the word convention what is the meaning of the word conference we abuse these things because we do rituals without revelation are we together now now is the time for building please hear me now is not the time for buying suits now is the time for buying books now is the time for buying the experiences of people now is the time for buying the pain of people buy their experiences preparation I see many people who say they want to be men of God. I don't criticize them, but I'm just laughing. Because most people think all there is to ministry is to have the ability to throw somebody down. You are joking. If it was that easy, I guarantee you people would not be suffering. Benny Hinn came around Nigeria. And you see the number of desperate people. We all flocked in waiting to receive an anointing. What does that tell you? It's scarce. Genuine power is scarce. Make no mistakes about it. Do you know why many people do not rise? We are comfortable with average. Average will only bring you in the scene but never distinguish you. Reward is for those who are distinguished, not those who are present. <laughs> is God speaking to someone? There is power in preparation. Let me tell you, when I started out in ministry, I didn't do many of the things many people are doing in life. No. No. That time, ask a Jimmy, I used to walk with a bag. Remember my black bag? It had Bible. It had my books. The books, the speakings of God to my life. I would always walk with it. Those were the times you see people who buy tape. Oh, they post tape. 
maybe Pastor Chris, any other tape, and they are small rechargeable. They will raise all their money and buy rechargeable. Not, not. Many of us seated here, you do not have any device for hearing the word of God. You don't. But you have clothes. You are a young lady of 19, 20. You have clothes of a married woman of 35. It's not wise. It's, it's a terrible, it's an extended version of foolishness. Are we together? You, you must take your destiny serious. This thing does not happen by magic. God is not a charm. He's not a genie. You've got to be serious. Some of us, as you keep your Bible like this, it's Friday that you pick it again. And yet you move around. I am, I, I, I hope to be called. Let's see which one, uh, prophet, uh, apostle. I will use pastor. You are dreaming. <laughs> are we together? One gentleman sent me a text during miracle service that he was coming. I said, who are you? He says, a man of God somewhere. I said, that's all right, you are welcome. Then he sent me a text. He says, informing me so that they'll put a special reservation for him in front. I said, my brother, this front seat you see is a testimony. The front seat is not a wish. It's a testimony. This is a testimony. You, you come and sit down. The seat will reject you. Have you seen that kind of thing where people, kings, come and sit down? They say somebody dies. You don't sit down in a seat unprepared, sir. No. Preparation. I look at your prayer life and I know whether you are preparing. You want to be able to stand and preach. That's what kills a lot of men of God. They have not built that spiritual capacity. Don't you know that praying in tongues is like doing business? You are making an investment of strength into your future. A time will come, you will not have the time to do 10 hours every day again. I can't pray for 10 hours every day. I'll be an irresponsible man of God because there are things to do. But there were times I would stay morning till night. I was building strength. He said, eat for the journey is far. Brothers and sisters, some of you, now is the time to lock yourself. You may look stupid, but you are building an extraordinary ministry. You are already in prayer band two weeks. You say they don't know me. Please sit down, Jare, and, and walk on your destiny. All this quest for recognition. Recognition. I think they should know me. No, sit down. Sit down. There is power in preparation. Let your competence announce you. Let the grace upon your life announce you. You cannot light a lamp and put it under a bushel. But you also cannot put a lamp that is not lit on top. All this quest for manifestation, please hear the voice of the Lord tonight. That's not the way to do it. That's not the way to do it someone asked me a question i think i don't know if it was a year or two ago and said apostle what are you doing with your life now i told him i said i am preparing for an extraordinary life he said preparing i said exactly uh, you think this thing i'm doing is ministry this is industrial attachment my goodness my goodness my goodness this is not close to what i've seen in the visions of the lord it doesn't even look like it compared to the koinonia god showed me this is a, a cave we are just waking up are you that inspired? Or have you started clapping for yourself and you want to build a camp around it? Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life. We don't need. I look to you for life. Let me come to your house and your room. Show me your library, and I see how serious you are with knowledge. Books are very important, they are a communication of your value for knowledge. When you buy a book, you are not buying paper, you are buying a man's pain. You are you are you are you are buying access to a man's testimony people's mistakes at a platter of gold for you to study and understand there are many people who don't read let me tell you how you know you are not preparing for your destiny 
is excessive idleness when i see a young man who is idle you must be lazy or you are not preparing do you know the urgency number one for most of us over 95 percent of us a mistake has already been made in our foundation i hope you know some of us got born again at 26 27 you are already behind at age 14 mary was giving birth to jesus you are 25 you are not born again you are already behind Shedu. Why should you be roaming up and down? In broad daylight, you move around and you see people just taking sugar cane, gisting, and then they come to someone else's house. How are you? I was just strolling. Are you free? And then they are offended when you say you are not free. Everybody say, I'm going somewhere. Say it, I'm going somewhere. And now is the season of preparation. I will prepare. You want to be a millionaire? Let me see the preparation. Let me see the preparation. Show me the character traits you are building that will qualify God to grant you access to such wealth. You want to be an extraordinary leader? Show me those you are receiving mentorship from. You are moving around, not doing anything. Ladies, hear me. Don't be under pressure. The next thing in your life after school is not just marriage. Thank God for marriage. But build yourself. Focus on preparation than manifestation. You are not qualified to receive anything you are not prepared for. Preparation. Preparation. Settle down, prepare. Kata, kata, baladaba. Lord, you said you are going to give me the nations. Work on my character. Let me become an exceptional man of God. Lord, at this small level of ministry, they are already criticizing me. I can imagine the criticisms on great men like Papa Oyedeko and Adeboye. Lord, build me. You have already told me that my ministry will have branches all over the nations of the earth. Can I survive the criticism that takes, that, that having that kind of anointing will bring? Don't you know it's, it's, it's risky to be rich? Do you know the criticisms? Somebody will look at you and say, young people like this, they, they, they touch something. You are right. You are right. Nobody becomes rich just by doing nothing. They've criticized you small. Somebody just looked and said, I don't like Pastor Femi's shirt. And he's, he's angry. He's quarreling. He's saying, no, no, what is wrong with my shirt? Ah, and then you now want to be a leader over two million people you want to die ask moses moses the meekest man on earth he was angry and about to kill himself god said calm down that's how ministry is have you ever gone to god for prayer and god said no that's how it is so i hope you know that, that there is no breakthrough for this prayer is how it works hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah. very interesting friend who wanted to organize crusade one time the guy was passionate about souls he was not passionate about finances so he wanted to organize crusade I, after the prayer fasting visions everything he didn't even start because there was nothing to start with he couldn't even start i told him i said well these are the logistics that are part of ministry And he was so disappointed and angry because in his mind I was the sponsor of that crusade. I said, no way. God did not give me any vision. I am not the ram and the scapegoat you had from God. Flog out your way of funding that vision. Brothers and sisters, preparation is powerful. When you go through, you read books and you see how a man of God will tell you 12 years in his life, nothing worked. And then you say that I'm four years. That means there's hope for me. That means it's not unusual. It's not like I don't have faith. Let's continue going. You study about a man who built his conglomerate. He will tell you he built 20 companies and they failed. He was the 21st one that is the one that is blessing you. And you say, I just built three and they failed. Ah, there's hope for me. You are learning. Preparation is giving you strength. A time will come, they look at you and they say, You claim to be a man of God's wife. Look at your husband, his mouth is looking dry. You are not feeding him. And you say, Abba, husband, am I not feeding you? You didn't prepare. 
because if you prepared you would have studied other men of God's wife and they would have told you this thing is normal so as they are insulting you you just say oh so that's how it is your spirit has been prepared anything you cannot take now is because you are not preparing you will see a man of God lying down and think the place is cold. You lie down there and the heat will burn you because your skin. You know what they used to do for masquerade? They said they used to cook them so that nothing will happen. Allow preparation cooking. So that while somebody is shouting now and saying, do you know apostle is a herbalist? Do you, I know the woman that gave him power. And then you come and tell me as a, as a concern. I say, apostle, I respect you. They are spoiling your name and then I laugh. <laughs> I would have cried in 2006 or 7 but now oh come on prophesy to yourself say myself grow up say it myself grow up there are many needless struggles we are going through because we are not prepared you are not the first to be criticized are we together you are not the first to go through challenges you are not the first to go through disappointment it's only because you have not studied others who had worse cases so you don't have a basis for comfort God is speaking to someone tonight preparation some of us are confused where we are now you don't know whether to start a church you don't know whether to start a prayer group you are not the first to start ministry go and examine the top 20 ministries how did they start there was a day it was in their mind did they start a church service bishop oyedeko did not want to start a church because at that time there were already too many churches based on him so your confusion about should i start a branch fellowship is because of your level and your thinking you are not the first to think like that when you learn that you will appreciate mentorship because you bring your mountain and somebody just walks on it and says, ah, is it this mountain? I remember 1981. Go and read the book. There is, there is a solution for that mountain. Oh, man of God, our ministry is about to be thrown out now. We are owing 30 million. I said, just 30 million are com complaining. In 91, we were owing 500 million. And then you now sit down. You are hearing a man talking to you and he says, look, let me tell you what to do. Pray, give a seed, and go to bed nothing is as bad as it is and then you conquer that i remember when one time um we held a little program and i was going thirty thousand thirty thousand i was sweating i didn't know what to do with my life thirty thousand it was from one book money somebody loaned us it was so terrible i remember the day it was even late dr bimbo dukoya's books when they brought her to zaria 2005 after organizing the program now very nicely his presence in worship are we together now there was no i mean the whole thing and they needed the money by nine o'clock nine o'clock by seven o'clock i don't i'm not sure i had up to 500 i was sweating around i didn't know what to do so now you are owing eight thousand and you are moving around my blood i, I think i'm having high blood pressure calm down calm down there is something preparation will teach you that you stand up and walk god is speaking to someone it is comforting to see those who have gone through what you are going through times 10 find out what they did to come out preparation and dotan became mighty unmovable let me tell you i have studied the life of men in ways you cannot imagine studying their life built great comfort in me many of them were 10 times as ignorant as i am now yet they were able to go through some things and i said no at this level i even know more there's no reason why i should fidget it will work to work you are not the first to get married you are planning for marriage and you just say ah, my budget is 1.5 eh? dr jenny 1.5 you are seeing a man with two children you will not ask questions sir two children means you married what happened what did you do you know see it's pride to think your problem is new to everybody it's pride what is a mountain to you is a valley to someone you are not the first to have carryover hey will i stay or will they drive me please go to bed there are people who have taught this lad you are seeing left right and center to a point that they just look at the board and say glory be to god oh. Fear is as a result of ignorance. 
and it's partly a product of not preparing you have ignored the pain and the sacrifice of others somebody's pain you have ignored is why you are afraid today because if you buy their materials and study their lives you will learn their pain koinonia was not built in a day many of you have never cared to ask the story behind it because you don't care all you know is that you are enjoying there will be workers dinner and it's free paid for just dress well and come i say i like going on here. i like a ministry that takes care of us like this there was a story there was a story behind it preparation you learn the principles of the kingdom preparation that's the time of trial and error please hear me that's the time when you are you are learning to handle the keys of the kingdom like a baby trying to hold a key and open a door you will use wrong keys you will use wrong keys it's in the place of preparation you will know how the anointing works so god will keep building you you will read the books you will listen to the messages then one day you and god will go on small it somebody will now say please pastor femi can you just pray for our little group and say ah me i mean you are even calling me pastor and then on that day you will pray some things will happen others will not happen you will first go with confidence you are fasted dry it's even dry you went for the meeting and then you go there before you start preaching somebody is already shouting and you're like eh? that means this is easy then every other person you lay hands on now doesn't fall and i said what's the confusion i didn't lay hands on anybody somebody was shouting the ones i now in direct contact with the anointing so preparation you now go back in one message you are hearing you will hear a mystery that explains that operation say, ah this is what i did wrong you have learned you are learning you are learning are we together you are learning about finances god told you you'll be a multi-millionaire ceo all that you've held home and abroad in your entire life is hundred thousand and you are working one day god will give you it somebody will just send you four hundred thousand and say please can you keep it for me for two weeks and you find out your body is shaking you can't sleep you will get up you are moving up and down you say ah, should i touch this money and pay back quickly you see a revelation that you are not qualified you are beginning to see the effect of money then you learn from that preparation that money is a spirit it's not just notes it can do something to you and you are now thinking 200,000 is in my account and I cannot sleep what will happen if 200 million is in my account then you begin to respect every man who you see sitting down he's a millionaire but he's drinking a bottle of water it took discipline to conquer that what are you what are you ignoring by refusing preparation is God speaking to someone you are preparing you want to be a good wife in the process of preparation you will read a book and see that a man of God's wife she will now say God told me when God told me my husband did not yet know and God was sending me to women to go and cook with them and you say ah the Holy Spirit will tell you now go and do likewise you will now say ah Auntie Shade please can I come to your house just to help you and while you are washing place you are asking her questions and she's answering what happens when a great man is angry as a good wife how do you treat if your husband is a public figure how do you shield him you are not learning you are only saying this brother god has been speaking you are not seeing me you would never see you because god is not a wicked god to carry his servant laboring and just give you no you prepare you prepare say amen stop claiming things carelessly sit down and prepare and before you know it you will see them in your hands i respect people who are mighty yet understand the power of preparation there are people you see in this koinonia mighty men and women in the spirit very mighty you just see them quiet some of them have had one-on-one -on -one encounter with them their prayer life fire their word like fire the maturity and wisdom upon their life is uncommon nobody even knows them they are quiet god is preparing them one day you just see god will carry one brother and give them and say, ah where is this one coming from are you joking nobody comes from nowhere people are preparing quietly you are the only one standing where pe prepared people are standing but you are not prepared 
I receive grace to prepare. Lift your voice and pray. I receive grace. Lord, I see how I've been shortchanging myself. I've been acting like I've arrived. I've been trying to look rich. I've been trying to look anointed. By this teaching tonight, oh God, I receive grace. Grace, koinonia, pray. I stop complaining about what is not working. I value the pain of those who have gone ahead of me. And I make up my mind to draw from them. Shakata baratakaya. Leke prons kebariata lakoto supahaya. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A pastor sent me a text. And the pastor was really complaining. He said, man of God. God is increasing us in ministry. But right now I just discovered every other thing in my life has died. My prayer life has died. My word life has died. I still see miracles. I still see great things. But I'm so disorganized. I used to be an organized person. And I told him, I said, you are still using the mindset you, you were using when you were starting ministry. Are we together? Do you know what it means for a very busy person to still maintain his prayer life? There is a technique. It's not just as the spirit leads. There is a system. How do you maintain a prayer life? Reading chapters of the Bible. When from morning till night you are walking. How do you balance that? As an influential person. You are married with two, three children. How do you maintain your spiritual life? How do you maintain a good fatherhood? And a, you're a good husband. You are not the first to go through it. Find out. There are people who are flawlessly effective. Find out. There are men of God who preach five, six messages every week and everything is new. You want, you are already tired. Your little fellowship in one state somewhere, maybe just two or three branches and it's already killing you. Yet people like Dr. Paul Enenche running six services every Sunday, two services every week, intermittently they can travel to Europe and come back in the morning, find out there is a system. There is a system, otherwise it will kill you. John G. Lake did not understand that. He did well in ministry and died in his family life. What is the secret of men of God who are effective in family? Their schedules are packed full, everything. I remember when we started, I didn't know that there was a protocol department that handled ministrations and made things easy. I used to handle them by myself. You bring your letter, you come and give me. I look at it. I say, okay, let me go and pray about it. At a point, there were several letters. I said yes to many people. I'll say, yes, I'm coming to your church. Yes, I'm coming to your fellowship. I will not even remember. I found out that I had to prepare four, five messages in a week. It was weighing me down. I said, it's not like I don't have what to say, but I can't stand before God's people and preach what I know God is not leading me to say. I can preach any nice sermon, but will it be effective? Are we together? What do you not know? I'm drawing you to a point. Your pain today is because you have ignored preparation somewhere. Then I began to study. I got Bishop Oedeko's book, Towards Excellence in Life and Ministry. I got that Dag Hayward Mills book, Church Administration and Management. I got some of the Adela's books, Pastoring Without Tears. I got some of these materials and sat down. When I began to study, I said, ah, so this is how it works. I've been killing myself for no reason. Are we together? Killing myself for no reason. I remember when I had to be under pressure to answer everybody's call. It was like I'm a receptionist. Somebody will call and say, is this apostle? I just want to know. And for five minutes, you are arguing with the person. Is this apostle? If it's not apostle, please don't waste my time. And it's my credit to... I'm now calling. I say, "Is apostle? Say, to apostle, please, do you have time? Because what I'm about to tell you is is boiling in my spirit, and I will now carry my big head and say, "Yes, I have time." And for 30 minutes, while you are talking, another text is entering, another call, and I find out that sometimes you can stay three hours. You are just answering call, and you are fagged out. You are fatigued. Someone who finishes work, he will work well, have a nice time with his wife, go to church, and come back, then call you. That's when you now want to rest. Then others started calling by one or two because they found out that I don't sleep in the night. They will now call and say, Apostle, sorry, you. They just go ahead. I used to feel so guilty. If I'm sleeping and my phone is ringing, I feel so bad until I read a man of God's book. 
that delivered me. Now it can ring. If it's an emergency, call the police. Yeah. Call the police. People would threaten me and say, man of God, pride, pride. You've not gotten anywhere. You used to respond to us before. You even used to send us recharge card. But now you are, you are getting arrogant. I will feel so bad. I'll say, but God, please search my heart. Until I found out that that's how people are. It's not like they are just becoming it for me. They are like that everywhere. I just said, ah, please, go to bed. Ah, somebody's already gaining wisdom. They are gaining wisdom. So when you walk out of here and you see what she's wearing. You say, why does everybody hate me? No, you are not the only one. It's like that. You are just discovering it. You are just discovering it. I don't know why everybody talks about me. Everybody, is there something wrong? Ah, if, if you are looking at your legs, you will cut two of your legs. Because there are too many people who can talk. Ah, God is giving us wisdom. Preparation. 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 There are some of us married people. People come to your house. You are under pressure to cook for them. And give them everything. Because let, let them not say we are not good. Let them say who. Let them say. Because you will find lousy people. They will come to your house. Is there pepper soup in this house? You will think they are joking. They really mean it. You will rush. Go to the market. Buy, buy cow. You think it's just a joke. You are not learning to grow up. You need to listen to people who have learned to manage people like that. Two o'clock, they'll come again. They'll say, sorry, oh, we are here again. Is there still something for us? Then you will read a book that one determined young man one day walked up to them and said, please, visitor, we have, we have a program in this house. There are times we have Bible study. There are times I'm just spending time with my wife. There are times we are spending time with the children. It is important to let us know you are coming. Man say, what is there? What do you think you are? Leave him. Let him go. Carry his trouble and go. At least you are free now. There is something you need to know to set you free. Most of this depression we are having is because there is something you don't know. So you sit down there and think people are talking about you. What will they be saying about me? What wouldn't they say? Do well, they will talk. Don't do well, they will talk. So be used to it and enjoy your life. You see what preparation does for you. So you create a system of joy that is independent of the things around you. And you become a motivated leader. And everybody looks at you and says, wow, this guy is a leader worthy of emulation. Then your ministry increases because you have learned how to motivate people into excellence. Say amen. You have to learn the principles of the kingdom. Very quickly, there are four areas still under the second point. There are four areas that you must work on. Four areas that you must work on. Number one, you must contend for a comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom generally. As regards understanding the word of God and applying it. Understanding the word of God and applying it, you must contend for that mystery. You must know how to apply scripture to your life. If you want to be great, use your times of preparation to learn how to make the word of God work. Number two, you must contend for the secret to the anointing. In your place of preparation, you must find out. You cannot, um, it has nothing to do with ministry. You want to be great in life without knowing how the anointing comes, you are joking. So in your place of preparation, you have to find out. This anointing that has been responsible for the greatness of many, how does it come? Number three. You must find out principles of leadership and administration. I know you are a man of God. But you are going to have leaders. I know you are a businessman. But it will not always be popcorn forever. A day will come you have companies with offices. You must understand principles of leadership and administration. Number three, you must understand finances. You must, in your place of preparation, you must study finances. No matter how much of a man of God you are, a businessman, a father, you must, this is a tool. I'm mentioning for you the tools that you will use to fulfill destiny. 
you need it study on finances don't just be a money monger don't just be a hustler don't just be obsessed about money and business understand the system understand how this thing works understand the challenges the vicissitudes that surround it are we together number four the last thing you must understand is people and relationships people and relationships brothers and sisters if you don't understand people and relationships you will die like a chicken they asked bishop oyedeko years ago they said what's the greatest source of challenge and pain in your life he said people they said what's the greatest motivation in your life he said people do you know the reason for many discouragements is people what they have said the reason for your encouragement the same people you must understand people get my message understanding people mastering relationships and then the prophetic implication of association you have to learn that i got a book years ago that changed my life how to win friends and influence people by dale kennedy right it blessed me it opened my eyes to the psychology of human relationships it helped me understand people thoroughly to know how to relate with different kinds of people you need this in your life otherwise you will get a job and after two weeks you are angry with everybody because you will meet sarcastic people even as a man of God you are going to meet people in your church people who are very disloyal to you you need to learn what to do with them you are going to meet people who are very anointed but rebellious you are going to meet people who are very submissive but careless and less as fair all these people you have to work with them you get a job you are going to work with lazy people you are going to work with very corny people people who are corny they will bribe and kill you if need be for promotion you've got to understand the ethics of working with people maintaining relationships number three the last point action the last key to opening up your prophetic destiny is action the power of action so number one is an encounter with jesus number two is the power of preparation number three is action the power of sustained action now by action i don't just mean movement action means the relevant steps that you take action takes courage write it down when you are about to take action over your life your business your ministry it takes courage to act brothers and sisters there are things you are going to be doing in your life you will be the first person to do it in your entire family it takes action it takes courage joshua chapter one he said be strong and of good courage nobody has ever gone to school in your family you are the first to do it there is fear i was i was talking with, i can't remember who i was talking with now we're discussing the subject of fear and i told him there are two dimensions of fear there is fear as a result of the presence of the spirit of fear there is fear as a result of stepping into the unknown you must distinguish them are we together now there is the fear as it is as the presence of a demon spirit you cast that one out god has not given us that spirit of fear but every time you are doing something new or something extraordinary that that ability to push through something that is new will bring fear it's not unusual there are many of us here who have gone through certain sustained seasons of preparation but action action are we together you are the first person in your house to get a job and for many months you have not submitted an application because you are used to everything being done free for you are we together you've not submitted any application and the lord is telling you stand up and go to benin and submit your application say ah god no 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 no. who is going to pay my money where am i going to stay you have to summon courage to get up and take bold steps in life are we together courage courage action requires persistence there are certain times your first step will be the wrong one but it doesn't mean you are wrong the step may be wrong but you are not wrong start the business start the church start the ministry 
action requires courage action requires persistence there is an ugly ideology in the church that the moment people start things and fail people rally around them are you sure it's God and they destroy people's destinies how many great businesses would have stood but for the advices from churches how many great destinies there are people who who left who left certain precious jobs that God gave them simply because of an advice if they are shouting at you like that is he worth it and then you leave it and now you are suffering are we together number three action requires a system now this is very important you don't just act carelessly you act based on a system you build a system you build a system around your action for instance when it's now time for you God has called you and God has anointed you and told you it's time you now sit down there, there is a system you can start a prayer group a prayer fellowship as God is bringing people they are getting healed they are getting blessed God is lifting you God is bringing people into your life most of the people God is bringing are not your members stop calling them your members and sons and daughters they are your leaders in the making are we together God never sends members he sends leaders they will come as drunkards they will come as troublemakers your assignment is to prove your apostleship make them become what you have seen in the vision they will not come ready made action you must build a system around it we had a system like that when he and i was starting we'll get people born again there was a system you got filled with the holy spirit and then we were praying and so when people got born again in one week they were already on fire a system around your business you may now say okay let me now build a system i separate business money from my personal finances maybe i open an account for business i need to be serious now not that any money that comes is for the eating you don't know which one is for your shop which one is for you so you eat everything and then you calculate and say somebody is stealing somewhere no no so i remember hundred thousand enter why is there sixty thousand you ate it it's your account system all the great empires in the world all the great destinies that you see the uncommon lives in ministry in politics in influence in any area of life were built this way this is the way people become great they have an encounter with jesus that encounter brings them to a submission to his values and the next thing they they plant themselves under a ministry or a platform or a spiritual family are, are you getting the progression now this so that when you get people born again you know what to do with them when people have an encounter with Jesus the next assignment is to create a structure or plant them under the Bible says they that be planted in the house of God they shall flourish in the courts of our God he said in old age they shall be fat and flourishing hallelujah just like you are seated now now you are hearing this you are taking steps based on what I'm teaching you will go back now and because there is an anointing upon what I'm saying you will not ignore it as you go back it will burn like fire in your spirit you will begin to make decisions that are consistent with it are we together now and you begin to see your life rise you begin to see yourself improve then you can know that I'm going to be a good man not just because I think I am good I have studied the system that makes men good then I know I'm going to be a blessed man not just because I hate poverty I've studied the system I know I'm going to be extraordinarily anointed not just because I'm, I want to gyrate myself no, 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 no I've understood the system at that point you can look at life and smile it's called mastery you can rise to a point where you look at life and smile and know that I have a great destiny I have a great destiny and you look at your life after 20 30 years and it's nothing short of a life of glorious impact on eagle's wings a book written by bishop david Oedipo, i think to celebrate the 30 years anniversary of living faith then or so i looked at everything the progression on how he started and i said this is it consistent i have studied many great men of god that's how they started Benny Hinn, Dr. Mike Mudok, 
Miles Munro, all the great men that represent great mentors and fathers in my life. I look at their lives and I see consistently, consistently. There were times in their lives they were for many years. It's like things did not happen. Even living faith with the kind of speed that it is experiencing now, there was a time it was stagnated. So you find out because at this point your ministry is not moving. So you go back. What did they do? Oh, they fasted, they prayed, they met together as leaders, they readjusted certain things. Fine. Papa Iya Deboe, there was a time redeemed was doing well but it was taunted and God told him that redeem needed to get to all the nations but as it were redeem could not cross certain cultures it could not go beyond the south and he went to the Lord and then the Lord gave him a formula he gave him a secret let him know that when you are dealing with global leadership you must have respect for people's culture and ideology it's quite selfish to want people to completely bend to subscribe to your culture kingdom culture yes but your, your sociological culture and paradigm, it may not be possible with every place. And so he opened up and painfully created that flexibility. So you can see one redeemed branch that looks like a contemporary um, uh, uh, church and all of that. And then you see another redeemed branch, youthful, another redeemed branch, still, you know, holding on to certain values. He just focused on the core values that represented the foundation of the ministry to preserve it. But then gave the flexibility and now redeemed this everywhere. Festival of Life in UK. It's as if, I mean, you see them everywhere there. France, everywhere redeemed because of that secret. You can now look at that. Why is my church not growing? Ah, and God opens your eyes through that light, and you now see it. Oh, the reason why my church is not growing is because um, I, I, I hold on to my values, but probably I, I impose every value, both spiritual, cultural, sociological, on people, and that value is restraining people. That may be just the key you need to adjust, and then all of a sudden. You find out that your ministry becomes a habitable place for people. Action. Action. God is challenging some of us to take action. You need to take action over your finances. You need to take action. There are different action steps you can take. You can begin to read books every day. You can listen to messages every day. You can get up and subscribe to direct mentorship. As much as God grants you grace. You may need to settle down and tell yourself, I'm starting that business next month. I'm starting it. I have prepared. I have paid my price. I am starting it. I will start it. Or you can say this month of November is dedicated to scattering my CVs around. I will anoint it. I will pray. I brought it for miracle service. They have prayed for it. Now God is waiting on me. I will scatter it all around. Hallelujah. Action. We are enjoying koinonia today because of the power of action. We are enjoying what God has done today because of the power of action. Listen, when will the generations tied to your grace reap the benefits of the action you are taking or otherwise? Whether or not you move, time is moving. Whether or not you move, time is moving. It is important to move with it. Time is premium. The only way to redeem it is to use it well. You don't save time. You use it well. You redeem it by investing properly in it. Koinonia, I bring you a word today. There is a prophetic destiny for you in Christ. You have been escorting men. Some of you, after tonight, you've got to sit down. Brothers, look at me. After tonight, some of you, when you go back home, don't sleep. You need to carry a chair and sit down outside and just carry a clean sheet of paper and say what am I doing with my life this is not the way it's supposed to work you have been joking around your destiny you are getting old things are not working there is nothing working in your life finances you don't know anything about it fatherhood you don't know anything about it that sense of maturity leadership you've not built anything time is going you have to give yourself a sense of urgency a day will come God will demand accountability for the grace and the life and the power and the strength that he has given you. He said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh. It's time for you to begin to study the Bible. 
it's time for you to begin to study the Bible. You want to become a great man of God. You don't know the Bible. You're going to crash land. You will be tired. Your members will be weary. They will leave your church and go somewhere else. Simply because you do not have the word. You are not instant in season. He tapped Elijah and said, eat for the journey is far. I want to round up. Are you preparing? Are you preparing for your life? Sister, are you looking for a man or are you preparing for marriage? Brother, do you want to marry by fire, by force or are you preparing? Marriage means a wife. Marriage means children. Marriage means the troubles that can come from in-laws. Have you positioned your spirit to manage it? Marriage means leadership. I want to start a business. CEO. CEO of what? Have you studied it? I want to become a great man of God. I want to be president and founder or geo. All that one is stories. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Are we together? Listen. I made a decision years ago. Today now makes it, um, not today, but 2016 makes it uh, 14 years. 14 years when I made a quality intentional decision. Now, I'd been working with God. I'd been doing certain things, but when I made up my mind to do what I'm teaching you now, 14 years ago, so when you see this today, it's a product of 14 years of consistency with the Holy Ghost. There were many other things that had happened before that time. But I made up my mind. I said from today, I will not be irresponsible. From today. I started studying and making a decision over my finances and my journey 12 years ago. Two years after I started my journey with purpose, I started my journey with finances. Listen, not every time is conducive for everything. You must redeem the time. You hear me saying this thing, redeem the time. Please don't let anybody just come to your house and come and waste your time with gisting and gossiping that does not make sense. Early in the morning, you are supposed to be praying six o'clock there in your house because you stay in the same compound. Bros, how you day? Then please, please, what, what is that shout? Please, I'm happy. Today is a glorious day. Take it easy. Bros, you don't cook. You don't do this. Just speak and tell him, please, I plan to be a leader. Take it easy. All these, your vulgar statements and the rest, I appreciate you, but take it easy. Don't come to my house and come and do everything you want to do. No. You behave. Action. You begin to dress well. You begin to be serious about your life. Are we together now? Yeah. Actions that reflect your destiny. You stop excessively spending money anyhow. These are action steps that some of you need to take. Make up your mind that from today, no fake life. I'm not ashamed. If all I can take is Gary now, I'm not going to say others are taking rice. Uh -uh. By God's grace, I will take Gary honorably. Any lady that cannot like me taking Gary now does not deserve to eat my rice with me. I will continue moving. No pressure. No pressure. God has given me two members. I will guard them jealously and teach them with all my heart and love them. No competition. Are we together now? I open an account. I'm saving. I am disciplined. Can't be a student and you are buying with one of 10,000, 15,000. It's not wise. You are destroying your future. That 15,000 can buy you a book. 15 plus one secret to a happy home. I think something like that. Uh, uh, Dr. Mrs. Energy, 500 naira, 1,000. You change your life. Are we together? God blesses you with 10,000 naira. You go and buy materials and dress well. Dress well. You don't look irresponsible. Please, I'm challenging us. We are going to pray. But I need to be sincere with you. You look well. You dress smart. You start learning certain ethics. When you are going before the presence of a great man, you don't look foolish. You destroy yourself. Now you begin to learn that not every opportunity opens every time. There are some of you here, brothers, you don't have one good suit. One good suit. 
you can budget for it one good suit so that the day God opens a door you have something nice you keep wearing all these rags that people wear around looking like fools and then you smile around it no you will never be great that way are we together you come to a point in your life where you begin to act responsibly when you see ladies you respect them you don't talk like a fool speak everything and no 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 no. you act like you are preparing to get married there are some of you i see you you are still acting like children although you are matured you begin to act responsibly you see someone's child falling down you create a sense of responsibility oh let me help this person you are taking action that is opening doors for you you see a man that is anointed you don't just stand let's see what he's saying pastor Alpha, what does he even have to say no the law of honor see there is a way you look at someone you know he has grown up you know he has grown up are we together let's take steps for our destiny you may not like what i'm teaching you tonight but just like others who are saying thank you now you will say thank you tomorrow i guarantee you you may not like me for what i'm teaching you now because for some of you i'm challenging you listen there are some of you especially ladies because you are very beautiful your beauty makes it such that anybody who comes around you likes you so there's nobody to really tell you the truth my name is joshua selman i'm telling you you have to settle down and be serious with your life you cannot float around a destiny full of flattery somebody has got to tell you this is wrong this is right the person who challenges you is the person who loves you. God is using me to do for us now what some of us did not get at home. And I will do it well. You may not, if you like, don't hate me, no problem. But you will thank me tomorrow. I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Stop all this childish play. Stop all these this irresponsible things people do around. Gossiping around, misbehaving. Some of you, are, you have already collected phone on credit. Go and return it. You don't need that kind of lifestyle. Oh, please, hey, Jimmy, uh, can I use your trouser for two weeks? No, you are, you are acting like a child. Can I use your shirt? I like your phone. Can you borrow me? I'm traveling somewhere. All these things are attitudes of children. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. I spoke like a child. Now that I'm a man, what do I do? I lay aside these childish things. Have you laid aside these childish things? Or are you just growing old? Maturity. Let me come into your room or your house or whatever and see it nice. I look at you and I see how careful you are. I don't come into your house and I see your fridge spoiled, your TV spoiled, your table dirty, your carpet dirty. And I just see you and you say, ah, apostle, you are welcome. May his presence. No, no, no. You are not showing responsibility. That's the same way you will be an irresponsible man. The fridge will spoil you. Say my wife will fix it. You are not already assuming responsibility. God cannot give you a great ministry. You can't fix your fridge of 1,000 naira. You want to fix lives? No, sir. Are we together? You wear clothes that are torn and dirty. You don't care? No, sir. You have to behave well. Say in the name of Jesus. From today, I make up my mind that I will fulfill destiny say it again from today I make up my mind that I will fulfill destiny give me two more minutes and then we'll pray how about bad friends I can't round up without talking about that show me your association and I show you your true values show me your association whether you went to the same primary school, secondary school, he was your chief, um, um, uh, your, your best man, whatever. <laughs> Sam is love you guys. What is the chief price made? Praise God. All this solidarity to wrong friends, you've got to make up your mind. You see, I've been saying this thing. Do you know some of us, if only you can leave your bad friends, your journey to a good life starts. Especially for us ladies especially for us ladies you love god but the moment you meet them they come with their wrong ideologies and then they force you to have to believe it 
you just came back from church and now you are making up your mind I will be responsible and someone goes hey this day oh ladies can I sit down you know that's what you just repented of but because of the presence of that friend he said Todd just tell me and you now keep listening before you know it you go back to your vomit again may God deliver you this night the courage to let people know you are serious about your destiny see I don't know what is it this our ego thing is what we have refused to take out of the way if I tell this person sorry you are interrupting my destiny they will feel bad they will criticize me so what so what make up your mind are we together make up your mind this night in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ make up your mind and say things will change I pray that you will really change in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that you will really change in the name of Jesus Christ there are many other things we need to change about some of you have up to 20 relationships consciously you don't care to you it's a symbol that you are a fine girl say do you know all these guys are dying I guarantee you none of them will marry you for you to be that careless with your life they will ask you out but when they are ready to marry they will come to church the brother will repent and dress well and come and look for a quiet lady who loves God every man stupid or sensible wants peace in his house are we together yeah so some of us pride ourselves there are good brothers coming they love god they fear god they are coming but you are there busy doing your emotional razzmatazz with all kinds of people you are growing old god will open doors for the brothers the brothers you see today that cannot buy a good shoe they will buy what will open your mouth tomorrow and by that time they will not be ready to marry you they will marry people younger than you don't be angry. I'm sorry I'm saying this, but I'm challenging you. And brothers, don't think what I've said now is a license for you to be foolish. Because some of you deserve no almost forever until you do something with your life. Please, don't, don't ever use what I'm saying now as an endorsement to come and harass any lady. If you don't merit saying any no, um, they will bring you to me. You are going to meet me somewhere in the equation. I will meet and I will tell you, no, no, you are not, you are not responsible enough. It's as simple as that. She may not have the courage to tell you, but I guarantee you, I will tell you. You know why I'm doing this to you tonight? I came with this spirit of fatherhood tonight because I, I want to challenge you. You're on your way to better days. You're on your way to better days. Every marriage you see here, by God's grace, some of our people here who are gloriously married, there were steps they took. Some of the things you are seeing here, the lives that are successful in ministry, by God's grace, you belong to a ministry that God has helped. These are the things that we do. They are not what we are saying. They are things that we do. He said, that which you have seen me do among many witnesses, do also. Do also. Be serious with your life. I can count the number of times you will come to my place and find me sleeping. Sleeping, snoring. Any time of the day, I'm awake doing something. There are sermons to prepare. There are videos to watch. I am, I am so passionate about eradicating my ignorance. So passionate. Please rise up on your feet. You're on your way to paradise. Three prayer points. Please, no moving around. We're going to pray. This is part of the meeting. I want you to pair yourselves into two. And let's just take five minutes to really pray. If you're married, please, you can hold your wife or husband, whatever, and pray because this is serious prayer we are going to pray now. Shaka barata Lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit in one minute. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Lo, I come. In the volume of the book 
pray in the spirit Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Lord, I vow, I make a covenant with my destiny. A covenant of seriousness and purposelessness. From today, I make up my mind to be serious and to be purposeful. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Young and old. Male and female. Those following online. Enter a covenant with my destiny. I must fulfill destiny from tonight. I decree and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus no more joking, no more playing games in my life. Hallelujah. Please make sure you pray. Those outside, make sure you pray. Something is happening. Prayer point number two. You are going to pray and say, Lord, every knowledge I need, every light I need to prepare me for an extraordinary life, please reveal it to me. Lift your voice and pray. The information I need to light are you praying take away ignorance financial ignorance ministerial ignorance leadership ignorance take it away from my life spiritual ignorance I bring it to the cross and I decree and declare that there's supernatural grace to work it out, to work it out, to work it out. Prayer point number three. Prayer point number three. Oh God, the spirit of laziness and inertia, that spirit that refuses me from being diligent, I curse it right now in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. I challenge laziness, spiritual laziness, mental laziness, physical laziness, wanting something for nothing. I cost that spirit grace to be diligent, grace to be valuable, grace to invest in myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points. Father, destroy premature, the appetite for premature manifestation. Manifestation when I'm not ready. Destroy that appetite from my life. Lift your voice and pray. Pray. Premature manifestation in business. Premature manifestation in ministry. Premature manifestation in family life. Premature manifestation in leadership. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace to prepare like Jotham. I prepare my ways before the Lord. And so I work strong and mighty. For preparation, hallelujah! Hallelujah! The last prayer point before I pray for you the courage, the discipline, 
and the diligence to take necessary action because some of you the season you are in now is the season of action you can't prepare forever you've got to step that spirit of fear that lack of courage what will people say i'd like you to lift your voice and destroy it right now lift your voice and pray lord it's time to take action over my finances it's time to take action over family life it's time to take action in ministry the action that will move me over my career over my job it's time to take action lift your hands let me pray for you I want to pray for you sincerely from my heart I want you to believe it God sees my heart whom I serve and God knows that my greatest desire listen my greatest desire I have always frowned at the leadership paradigm that makes one person a superstar shining while the rest are helplessly everybody can shine it will not kill the honor of the leader if you are a true leader, even in the greatness of the people you have raised, they will honor you and give you your place. There are many leaders who are not passionate. I made a vow with God when I started ministry. When Koinonia started, I've shared it with you. I will never pastor people who are not influential. I believe you can be anointed. You can be spirit-filled. You can be responsible. You can be financially free. You can be influential and useful in the kingdom. You do not have to choose one area. You can choose everything. You don't have to choose prayer and the word and neglect responsibility. You don't have to choose excellence and responsibility and neglect the ministry of the spirit. All of them are supposed to be complementary. So all these teachings that you see, I bring them, some of the teachings are hard, but they are designed to file our lives into action. The Bible says, iron sharpeneth iron. Are we together now? So as you receive this word, don't sit down arguing it. Don't be offended by it if it strikes you. The idea is to receive it into your spirit as the word from God. And know that this is coming from a leader that is passionate about your success. If I see you today excelling and doing great things for the kingdom, it's my fulfillment. You give me money today, I'm blessed, but I mean, what do I do with that one? But if I see your life transformed, you're a great man of God doing mighty things for the kingdom. That's my source of joy. My paradigm is not outshining people and having people struggling around. And then one superstar called Joshua Selman. My desire is to be the least even among everybody rising. It still will not destroy my worth. Lift your hands. In the name that is above all names, I pray for you. The grace that God supplied in my life that granted me the discipline to prepare. I am still preparing. But the discipline to have started that journey regardless of the challenges, I pray for you. May that grace come upon your life. The spirit of indiscipline and carelessness I declare that it lives your life this night and forever. Some of you, the spirit of slumber and gluttony, food and sleep that is robbing your destiny, be free from it this night. Some of you, inferiority complex, the, the pressure to look successful, the pressure to belong, is making you to do a lot of things. You've done too many foolish things. The change comes for you now. Some of us, the pressure of association. I want to become like my friends, my contemporaries. That, that pressure to, to fit in a group that is destroying you. I command that pressure to leave you right now. For some of you, the embarrassment to start again. The embarrassment to start again. 
after life has whipped you your business may have failed your ministry may have failed your career may have failed you are, um, you applied for a job you try to ask a lady out the, the, the courage in the name of Jesus I declare that grace for you again in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you may you begin to access deeper levels of revelation may God lead you to the books may God lead you to the messages may God lead you to the conferences where your anointing and your wisdom is waiting for you in the name of Jesus Christ whatever you do not know now that is responsible for your fears responsible for your concerns I pray that the light of God's word will swallow it right now the grace to go back to your drawing board the unashamedness to carry those books you used to write in that you have thrown away those dreams you used to write in some of you had books God used to speak to you every night but just because of little results you threw them may you go back and get those books again the culture listen the healthy spiritual culture you observe that brought you this far I release grace for you to continue it some of you the prayer life that brought you this far you have left it now the word study life the humility that brought you this far you have left it the sense of honor for authority that brought you this far you have left it please whatever you have left that you should not leave I command get back to it in the name of Jesus I speak over your life what has not been done in your family the limitations that they have put and say this family cannot cross this I prophesy to you you are the one who will cross that barrier in the name of Jesus and I speak finally to everyone here who is discouraged drop your hands down I'm speaking to you there are people here who are discouraged they're saying apostle I have tried things are not working as I'm standing right now I don't even know the name of what I'm doing with my life nothing is working finances zero marriage zero school zero work zero nothing is working I feel as if I should just die I bring you a word from the Lord he said is there hope for a tree right even if it be cut off he said there is hope for it at the scent of water the water of the word of God that you are hearing tonight may hope come alive I release upon you the courage some of you have thrown the button I want you to take it back and say no I will make it I will make it like an Olympic person who has been handed over the battle and now you left it the problem is if you leave it all the other people who gave it to you will also be failures because of you so you have to finish it grace to finish well in the name of Jesus Christ now very quickly before we round up please keep standing everybody no moving around there are people here you've heard the word that I've said please keep standing everybody there are people here you have heard the word of the Lord and while I was teaching listen please the Holy Ghost began to speak to you and said apostle is talking about you you need to make your ways right with Jesus two groups in one some of you have actually made a decision for Jesus at one point in your life but there is complete spiritual unseriousness and lukewarmness based on my definition here you see that you are not born again you may have come to recite a prayer but sincerely you have not submitted to the values of the kingdom and then there are those who have never truly made a confession for Jesus you've been around Christian things but as you began to hear me teach the spirit of God told you this is it this is where I've been trying to lead you you are a great man, you are a great woman this is where I've been trying to lead you I'm going to give you a few minutes our time is up and wherever you are there are many people outside I believe many people inside and thousands following us online the beginning of your journey to destiny starts with an encounter with Jesus. I want you to please walk out here. Don't waste our time. No sitting and thinking about it. I want you to walk and come here and say, man of God, pray for me. I want to start all over again. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. 
I know you heard the word. I know the Holy Ghost spoke to you. Rebels don't run away from him. Rebels don't come to him. Sorry. They run away from him. Keep coming. No cajoling. No cajoling. Jesus is calling you. Those outside were waiting for you. Don't say we came with a family. They are seeing me. Tonight is nobody's business. Those online, you may not be able to walk and come here, but I guarantee you, you can open up your heart. You are about to make a decision for Jesus. He said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. I still believe there are more people. I still believe there are more people outside. There are still more people who need to make up their minds and say, Jesus, I come to you genuinely. I'm tired of faking it. I mean business with you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. Look at me. That I'm leading you to make this decision does not mean I'm better than you in any way. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. It is a genuine decision that will begin your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Do not be ashamed. Listen, I'm serious with what I'm saying. There are still two people outside. The Holy Spirit is telling me they have to come out here. Come out. Come and join them now. Come and join them. There are still two people outside. The Holy Spirit is speaking to me. There are two people outside, 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 outside. The Holy Ghost, please don't waste our time. God is speaking to me. There are two people outside that you should come and join. I'm just giving you the word. Whether or not you come is up to you and God. But the Lord is telling me there are two people that he has spoken to them. Come and join them quickly, quickly. Now, those of you in front, listen. God bless you for your courage. Hallelujah. Listen, God does not condemn. Men condemn. Religious systems condemn. But in Koinonia, the first of our core value is love. I don't care what you have done. I don't care how bad it has been. God can give you a new beginning. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But make sure that your coming out here is not an emotional decision. The grace and the strength of God is available for you. But you must make up your mind. Lift your right hand to heaven. Jesus is here watching you. Take away Joshua Selman from your mind and see Jesus, the Lord of your life, giving you a new beginning right now. Say after me, seriously and sincerely, say, Jesus, I have come to you, the only one who can help me. This night, I hand over my life to you. I've tried managing it by myself and it has not worked. Tonight, I hand over my life to you. Be my savior, say it. Be my Lord. I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare that from today, I open up my heart for change. I open up my heart for transformation. I declare that I'm a child of God. I am born again. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The grace of God is at work in me. Keep your hands lifted. Father, these ones have come sincerely from their heart. Some of them are crying. They have come before you, the fountain of life. Some of them are giving their hearts to Jesus for the first time. Some of them have heard me speak and they are making a genuine decision. Lord, I stretch my hands towards them. I decree and declare that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of darkness is broken over their life. They have exercised their will. May your spirit find expression in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. From today, grace for you to live a victorious life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for making this great decision. I want you to follow someone. There's a gentleman waving his hands. Please, all of you in concert, just follow him. They will have their, your details and will follow you up. And then please hold on. Tuesday, on Tuesday, Tuesday this week now, please by 4 o'clock, all of you should be around for our prayer meeting at um, Rema, 4 o'clock Tuesdays. When people get born again, the system here is that you should... Be part of the prayer department for at least one month. It will help your spiritual life. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. Appreciate them, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. 
understand me In all your ways acknowledge me And he shall direct me Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kato, kete branda kata pako tosko tobre kete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.